NRL Grand Final Day on 2GB is thanks to Holden, Manshape, Crown Forklifts, Liquorland, Flower Power and Fair Dinkum Sheds. Well, you couldn't ask for a better day. Grand final day here in Sydney. Warm temperatures, warm conditions. The ground at the moment bathed in sunshine. We're just waiting on the two teams to make their way out for the under-20s decider. It's Penrith and the Manly Sea Eagles. The Panthers head in as the favourites, but we get to see this impressive youngster, Tom Trebojevic, who we saw a bit of for Manly in first grade this year. He scored an unbelievable amount of tries this year in the Holden Cup and in the NRL, really, as well. So he'll be on show this afternoon. The Panthers have been unbelievable as well in the under-20s, putting on a mountain of points in their game this year so well, I think we've got an entertaining under 20s grand final coming your way and a big thank you to our sponsors as usual Holden Adidas Group Ajax Foundry Palmetto Turf The Manshake Crown Forklifts Liquorland Sage Institute of Fitness Flower Power and Fair Dickham Sheds and picture just coming through on the Ipswich Jets warming up over at Concord Oval ahead of the Interstate Challenge Grand Final. They'll then make their way to ANZ Stadium for the big game, taking on the Newcastle Knights. It kicks off at 3.40, and Mark Braybrook will call that one with Mark Riddell and Chris Warren down on the touchline. Speaking of Chris Warren, let's check in with him right now because the gates have opened. Chris, how is it down there at ground level? Mate, it's pretty noisy, uh, given that we haven't even seen the, the first game kicking off. Um, they're just doing some warm-ups, some sound checks in the background, but as you say, the gates opened... Uh, some time ago and uh, the under 20s teams will be uh, here they are now making their way out but uh, very warm conditions and you can hear the crowd in the background that's the manly team making their way out first of all they go in as uh, our rank outsiders for this one but they were outsiders last week against the cowboys steamy conditions fast conditions and uh, let's get it on all right chris thank you mate chris warren down on the touchline for the star sydney the ultimate sports viewing destination so manly make their way out onto anz stadium they take up the position at the northern end to the ground and it looks like they'll be getting us underway for the under 20s grand final and Penrith to defend the southern end of the ground so let's link up with your commentary team Chris Warren on the touchline joining David Morrow in co-commentary is Daryl Broman Thirsty it's over to you for the first of the grand finals on grand final day the Holden Cup decider between Manly and Penrith thank you Mark and uh, the Manly side out there and led out by Riley Travers their halfback and I heard Daryl say it, it would be an upset if they uh, if they defeated this highly fancied Penrith side. I think most of us during the season that spend the time watching the under-20s believe that Penrith would be playing North Queensland in the grand final. But mainly to their credit, Daryl, they beat North Queensland on their merits last week. They had their chances, North Queensland, and Manly just hung in there until at the, at the eventually Nico Hines in extra time kicked that field goal that, that got him into the grand final. And if we go back to day one, that the first time we called a game this year, we're at Parramatta Stadium and we're marvelling about this blonde-haired fullback for Manly and uh, uh, we're still going to be marvelling about him. 20 tries in 13 games he yeah. scored and he might be the difference yet between... Uh, success and failure in this match. Oh, well, he's a, he's a standout every time he takes the field. And the good news for, for Tom Travojevic yeah, fans is the fact that he, he doesn't have strapping on his leg this week, and he didn't have it last week either. And he, he's, he's been struggling with a leg problem for probably the last six weeks or so. But, good, you know, he's all good today. Panthers out here. Robert Jennings, bit of first grade. Uh, they should win this game, the Panthers. They should, and we're about to see it kick off. And uh, Adam G, oh, very highly, very highly regarded referee, on the way up. He's the referee here for this Holden Cup Grand Final, and Penrith going to defend the southern end in the first half. And they bring the ball out, and they're going to bring the ball out uh, to around about their 20 metre line. And uh, it was Clark who's going to get up and play the ball about 18 metres out in their own goal line as they go back to the centre of the field. And the Penrith Panthers, as uh, they've beaten Manly, they've played them every every time they've met this year. The, pa the uh, Panthers have been successful. And uh, they're playing the ball to Luke, and Luke offloads the ball, and they decide to go to the left side, and carting it up here and cutting it up very strongly is Leota. They're going to play the ball around about 30 metres out in the goal line, 15 metres in from touch. Luke goes back the short side. In fact, this is Leota. That was uh, Fisher who took it up here on the left side immediately before that. Luke goes into dummy half. They come back the left side again, and here's the 5'8", the who's uh, putting in his first kick of the afternoon. It goes down the, the throat of the fullback, Trebojevic, and Trebojevic brings the ball back strongly. And, gee, they got down there enough. Numbers to <laughs> allow him no latitude to link up on the left side and Demetriou and Demetriou they're calling him the steamroller. I, I like him. I've watched him a little bit over the last ten or twelve oh, weeks. Oh, I think he's a former back row, but he's found a spot in the centres. 
I think he can uh, play a bit of first oh, grade, this kid. Not much. He's not very tall, but he's solid. Yeah, he's certainly, yeah, yeah. He's a hard man to bring down. It's the manly side bring the ball back, and it's Maxwell. who's tackled about eight metres. His own side of halfway plays the ball on the cutout ball, and it finishes up over here with Garner. Garner's up over the halfway. He's about 45 metres out from Penrith's line on the western scrum line. Last play comes to Pearsall. Pearsall puts a little grubber kick in, and coming for the ball and doing wonderfully well. Naden cleans it up. That wasn't easy. The fullback for Rapid. In fact, both these fullbacks are full of skill. And he came for the ball, a difficult ball to attack and get through to avoid a knock-on or conceding the ball back to Manly, but he did everything wonderfully well under enormous pressure. Absolutely, he did. Look at this. Good run there from Jennings out of dummy half. He's a big, tall thing, Brent Naden. There's a penalty to the Panthers here. And on the ball there from the Manly side, so that'll give them a, a little bit of relief, the Panthers. But I was just going to say about Brent Naden, I uh, haven't seen a great deal of him, but he's, he is a big, tall thing. He got down very low to take that ball. He took it beautifully because it was a, a dangerous little kick there from Pearsall. Now they bring the ball back and they bring it up through Jennings after the penalty. As Darrell told you, they've got a penalty and they're going to play the ball about 30 metres out now from Manley's line, 11 metres in from touch as Harawira gets it. He offloads the ball and takes it up as Clark and Clark has tackled about 29 metres out from the goal line down that northern end of the field as they go back to the right and the ball goes through the hands of Mayer. Why it goes to Jennings and Jennings, he's rounded up and over there by Demetrio who almost bundles him into touch. He couldn't be far away. Ball comes back to the open side. It's not the best pass you ever saw comes to May, May offers it up and they take it ahead strongly here through Izzard and Izzard's tackle, about 12 metres out on the goal line, right in front of the northern goal post, Luke goes from dummy half, throws a dummy goes straight through and first try of grand final day, Sonny Luke just to the right of the uprights and that's the first try on the scoreboard in favour of Penrith, they lead four points to nil. Gee, that was just too simple there David, wasn't it really, they just didn't number up there, the Manly Seagulls he looked to his left, there was a big back line out to his left, but it decided to go to the right. He had a look. There was about a five on four and they were spread out, those players. He saw a gap there, Luke. Got the ball through the dummy. Probably not as good a player as his namesake. He used to play for the Bunnies, but now, of course, he's going to the Warriors. But he's not a bad player, this kid, Sonny Luke. Got the ball straight through the middle of two Manly defenders there and just crashed his way over about five metres to the right side of the post. Great start for the Panthers in saying that they have had all the ball in the opening four minutes or so. Amazing what a penalty does too, Darrell. You know, they got the penalty, what, 40 out from their own goal line, found touch 30 out of the opposition's line. Six tackles later, they're in next to the uprights. Well, it's so important. Like, like any game of football you watch, yep. their possession is going to be massive. On a hot day like this, it's going to be quadruple massive, Davey. Well, here's his art. He's on the scrum line. Moves in. There's the kick. at goal. Hits the uprights. And would you believe bounces over the black dot. And there might have been an element of luck in that. In fact, the first kick of the afternoon hasn't been taken by his art. It's been taken by Dylan Edwards, the right winger who's had the kick at goal. And so uh, Penrith has uh, opened up the scoring with a converted try. And it's six points to as we go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star, Sydney. And here's Chris Warren. Yeah, they've got to be careful of that, Manly. Uh, you give this uh, Penrith team too much uh, easy ball and that was on the back of uh, a penalty and they uh, could be in for a long afternoon. They need to keep the penalty count down. They have conceded more penalties uh, throughout the season than any other uh, team so that's something they need to be wary of. And that was a cracking hookers try. You would have enjoyed doing that. Where's Chris? Is he dead? First. <laughs> No, I'm not. I haven't got the... I didn't have the button. Now, now, Chris, I said a cracking hooker's try. You would have enjoyed that. Absolutely. I did respond, but you didn't hear me. You didn't have the button. I said he's got a bit more toes, Sonny Luke, than I ever had. <laughs> uh, now they come, the Panthers, streaming down the left side of the field, and, and they bring it ahead strongly through James Fisher-Harris, and he's tackled almost on the halfway line. Eventually he'll be allowed to play the ball, and Luke's out of dummy half. They go back to the centre of the park again, and they get the ball to within 40 metres of the manly line. They're going to play the ball. It comes away. On it goes to May. May puts up a kick. That's probably a Joe Cocker. It's going to come down just in the field of play. And it's taken over there on the full by the winger, Edwards, who's cleaned up immediately by Bogle, thrown into, into the ground. And as a result, it's a handover. It's a great ball and all tackle by the left winger from Manly. And uh, that probably was one of the poorest kicks we've seen this year from Tyrone May. But 6-0 the scoreline in favour of the Panthers over Manly on Lotto's scoreboard. Well, it was, Dave. It was a terrible kick from him, considering he really wasn't under any pressure. There was no manly defenders putting pressure on him. He had all the time in the world to put the ball where he wanted to put it. Now they're penalised the Panthers for being inside the 10 metre line. Just an awful, awful kick from him. He needs to address that. 
So we've had about uh, six and a half minutes of play. Low school board, Penrith six, Manly nil on a lovely sunny Sunday afternoon. Well, it's a typical Sydney day, isn't Beautiful. it? Beautiful. There's a fa famous name or a familiar name in the Panthers outfit too. Reese, uh, Reed Izzard, I should say. It's Craig's uh, son. So Craig Izzard, Brad Izzard, Grant Izzard. It's a lizard a thon. So it's Brad's nephew. Yes. Craig's son. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the ball's taken ahead. Thank you for getting that right, Dave. That's right. And we've got Trebojevic. He happens to be, have a brother playing first grade. Yes. Ball is fed through the hands to Manly. Taking it up as Darcy Cox and he's tackled. He's around about 19 metres out now from the Penrith line. Southern end of the field. They play the ball to Pratt and Pratt offloads the ball and they go ahead strongly through Jesse Maxwell. Maxwell's only about 12 metres out. Great opportunity here for them as they go back to the left side of the field. Pierce will offloads the ball to Travers. Travers to Bainbridge. Bainbridge goes hard onto the ball. He's not far away. He's held up a metre or so out from the goal line. Manly on the attack. Ball played to Pratt, the hooker. It comes to Travers. Travers offloads to Pearsall, he gets past one, he gets past two he gets past three, he keeps it alive but the pass goes loose and Penrith come up with the ball eight metres out from their own goal line. Oh, nice run from Pearsall, there been a couple but geez, it was a poor option at the end of it he just flicked the ball back on the inside the ball floated forward, so no matter whether the Panthers picked it up or not it would have been a Penrith ball from the scrum feed but after a nice little dart from him around the middle of the ruck there, he just ruined it with a poor pass and here they come again, the Panthers, as they move the ball Jesse! up over the halfway line. Gee, I tell you what, Naden's done very... I, just, I thought I dropped it. I was just about to say, I don't know what it looked like from down at ground level. I'll go down and ask Chris Warren, but from here, he dropped it, knocked it on, rolled it along the ground, and then put a foot on it and got away with all of it. Uh, Chris, did you see that? Oh, I did, mate. It was a juggler thon, but uh, to his credit, he played to the whistle, and uh, now the ball's down the Manly's end of the ground, working their way back. Keep an eye on this uh, young Manly front rower, guys, Liam Knight. He gets through a ton of work. He's an 80-minute footballer, and uh, I know there's plenty of scouts looking at him, but uh, hopefully uh, Manly can lock him down for a number of years to come. Well, we've done a lot of Manly games this year, Daryl, and we've, we've watched a lot of this left side of Manly which has got Bainbridge, Demetrio and Bogle on it. And uh, they've, they've been impressive too. But uh, so far, haven't been given any opportunities, but they've got the ball at the moment after uh, they've uh, kicked down field, was fielded by Trebojevic, and they're bringing the ball back to Manly's side. They're going to play the ball about 45 metres out on the goal line. Penrith's enter the field. It comes away again to uh, Pearsall, who pumps it high in the air. It's going to come down about 10 metres out on the goal line, backing back. Naden takes it well. He runs across field. He straightens up, and he straightens up, upright, and three Manly players get there, driving back into the in goal area, and he can see the line drop and he should have got down low and made sure he didn't do that that was almost an air of arrogance about Naden's play there, didn't think that the Manly players had the wherewithal, Darrell to do what they've done. Got what he deserved then Naden, I mean serious, that, that again is a poor play, great defence from the Manly Seagulls there, the kick was a good one he, he actually struggled with it in the air I don't know if he judged it as well as he would have liked but he eventually took it on the full Brent Naden, but then decided to run across field and he was an easy target for them They're playing alright here Manly Oh, I'll tell you what, the, the dropout almost, it took a horrible wobbly bounce towards the sideline and Pearsall's done incredibly acrobatically to keep it alive and Manly have got it 31 out from the goal line. How that ball didn't bounce and go past Pearsall into touch, I'll never know, but Manly lift to fight an attacking set here as the ball comes back to the left and here's the man that, that uh, Chris Warren was talking about, Knight, Liam Knight, he's tackled 19 metres out from the goal line, he'll play it to Pratt, he'll go back to the left side, he gets it on to Travers, Travers quickly gets it away to Boybit, cut out pass for Bogle, Bogle for the line Bogle for the line, did he get it down, I don't think he did no, the referee and the touch judge said well for one I think they're ruling a forward pass and into touch, so I think there was a double whammy to say that Bogle didn't open the scoring for Manly this week Yeah, beautifully weighted pass there from Trebojevic he gave him an opportunity to get to the corner the linesman ruled he put a foot into touch he did, he dropped the ball as well, so as you said there was about a quadrilla of things there you could rule on for not awarding the try this will be a scrum feed to the Panthers there's a Panthers player down here at yeah, the moment. Corey Harawira Naira. Jeez. But Do Corey we have Hara to call him Co Corey no, call Harawira Naira? Or call him Harawira. 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 <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier if we just called him Corey? <laughs> Corey Naira. He's the only Corey out there, isn't he? Just double yeah. check. Corey Nara, no, we're Harawira. I'm putting him a line through Harawira. That's Don't do that because he's a, very, he's a very gifted player. Harawira. But, Can't you put a line through something if he's gifted? If you want to. <laughs> 
Mm. Well, he's up anyway. He's in the scrum now, so no problems there if you're a Panthers supporter. But they were under a bit of pressure. They're beautiful ball from Trevojevic. Anyway, they've got the ball, and uh, they're taking the ball up strongly here, the Panthers, and they're going to play the ball about uh, 20 metres out in their own goal line. As the ball comes back to the left side of the field and taking it ahead is Felino, and Felino is tackled 30 out from his own goal line. Penalty against Manly. See, this is what... See, this is the, the little uh, step that they took to score the opening try. Get a penalty, find field position up over halfway and then have a mm. set of six. Gee, they're running with a great deal of purpose. I like their outside backs at the moment. The, the Panthers I'm talking guys, about here. Both Robert place. Jennings and Felino, both running with a great deal of purpose, as are their front rowers. But they, they look a good side, don't they, Penrith? If they keep controlling the ball, I think you'll find they will go on and win this game. Ball comes through the hands again, and here's this big fella, Leota. He, or Leota, he gets to the line. He uploads back to his hooker, and he's going to play the ball 42 metres out from Manley's line. 20 in from touch. The ball played, and they go through the hands again, and they cart it up strongly through Izzard, and Izzard's tackled. He's about 35 metres out from the goalpost. Northern end of the field is going to be played, and it's played through the hands of Luke. It goes away. Difficult ball picked up by May. May gets it away to Jennings. Jennings tries to get past Bainbridge and another. He's tackled about 28 metres out from the Manly line. The ball played back the open side. They come. Harawira has the ball. Lovely short pass finds Leota but Leota tried to keep it alive but he didn't want who he was keeping it alive to. He threw it straight at Jesse Maxwell, the Manly prop who said thank you very much. Oh, just ill discipline there. It was, on a nice, it was a nice ball on the outside to that player. You, know, you mentioned there Leota but he, he went to the line. He was getting tackled. He flicked the ball back. The idea was right but it went straight to a Manly player. And uh, they've got the ball, Manly. 15, their own side of halfway. Low scoreboard, 12 minutes gone. Panthers 6 lead the Sea Eagles nil here in the Holden Cup Grand Final on a beautiful day here in Sydney. And they're going to play the ball about 8 metres, their own side of halfway. The ball is played to Pratt, and Pratt finds Knight charging onto it. A ball that the Trappers did well to hold on to. He opened it up to Bainbridge, and Bainbridge is tackled just over the Penrith half. He's about 20 metres in from touch. Isn't that a great name? Billy Bainbridge. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Grubbing kick from Manly. Should be picked off by Naden. Naden picks it off and then starts his run back. He gets away from one. He gets away from two. Naden sprints down that right side of the field. He's almost got through. He's tackled just short of the halfway. They come down to Witch's Hut drill like that. Naden will put you, put you to sleep very quickly as he almost did. And Jennings makes another uh, good 10 or 15 metres. He's tackled 40 metres out on the goal line. They go on the attack again and they take it up now through the right winger Edwards. Edwards is tackled. 32 metres out from Manly's line. Almost in front of the goal post, centre field, they go back the right side and take it up as the, the big prop forward and this is Oliver Clark and Clark has tackled 22 metres, 23 metres out on the uh, the eastern scrum line of Luke, he's allowed to run a long way again and he almost got through the whole lot of them again Bainbridge puts him down, Leota goes back the right side, May, May for the line May reaches out, May scores 15 metres in from touch, I think he scored yeah. let's see what the referee says, doesn't go upstairs and it is Tyrone May who scores the second try of the Holden Cup grand final, low scoreboard Penrith 10, Manly zip oh, again it was on, a, on the back of a great run from the hooker, Sonny Luke who just got the ball, he cut through and then prior to that I've got to say it was the centre Robert Jennings who's looking sharp as anything today, he was a great run prior to it, they had numbers again on their right side here the Panthers their defensive side of Manly on their left side is looking a bit well threadbare at the moment they seem to be thin on numbers but Tyrone May as you said just put his head down, pinned his ears back and scored. Good try to the Panthers. They're leading 10 points to nil. We've got a kick to come. As I said, if they can control the ball here, they, they look to me classes of, above Manly. They do as we go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star, Sydney. And here's Chris Warren. They're worrying signs, isn't it? They've been down there twice, uh, Penrith, and they've come up with two really soft tries and uh, Manly retreating that whole set of six on the, on the back foot. Pretty warm out there and uh, 15 minutes gone, but some of the, the big fellas are sucking in the big ones. I, I, I noticed that last kick chase, there was only one or two players chasing it at all and uh, gaps really starting to, to form on the manly fringes. Chris Warren, courtesy of the Star, and of course, that'd be a great place to watch the grand final tonight. Star. Big oh, crowd in there, wouldn't magnificent. there? Magnificent. 10 metres in from the eastern touchline, 20 metres out 
And Dylan Edwards, the opportunity to make it 12-0 on the low scoreboard. He punches it low, punches it straight, punches it between the sticks. Doesn't need the assistant to the in-off to add the two points this time. 25 minutes to go in the first half. And the low scoreboard has the Penrith Panthers 12, leading the Manly Seagulls nil. Yeah, vital time here for the Manly Seagulls now. I mean, we've, as you said, Dave, we've only had 15 minutes of play here in the first half. It's already 12-0 to the Panthers. They can't let the Panthers score again here, otherwise... Well, you think it's going to be too much for them so no, early no. in this game. And, and, you know, their heads will drop. Uh, their star player, Tom Trebojevic, at the moment, they haven't had a lot of ball. And, you know, clearly, if you don't have the ball, you can't score. This bloke's a, a great player. As you see, a great there run straight now. up the middle of the park from Leota. He's a, big, he's a big fella, isn't he? And uh, James Parker's gone out there. He borrowed Steve Jamie Bu- Buehrer's headgear, One, by two, the look of things. Oh. Not quite, but it looks very much like him. Ball comes back to the left side of the field and through the hands it comes again. And this is this big, tall, striding left side player, James Fisher-Harris. Hasn't One he got a stride go. on him for a second rower? Ball comes back to the centre to Clark and, to, to to Clark and they, they're making easy metres down the centre of the field. Pendant, they'll come back to the left as they send the ball through the hand. On it goes out here now, bringing the ball up at Felina. No, Felino's tackle, 28 metres out on the goal line. He plays the ball to Anisi. On the last play, goes to Luai. Luai pumps it high in the air. Pressure coming here, and it's knocked on by Manly. Knocked on, and so Penrith will get a set of six after the scrum. 10 metres out from the, the try line at Penrith at Manly's end of the field. Great set. Great set there from the Panthers, and they got a bit of luck at the end. The ball went in the air from the from the half back then, uh, Luai, and he just dropped it. The Manly player standing Bogle. there. Who was it? Bogle. Bogle, yeah. yeah. Red Ogle's son, Bogle. But anyway, <laughs> he just dropped it. No, Brett's, Brett's a Parramatta supporter. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> but he just dropped it, Carl. Uh, look, I am a punting man. I reckon Penrith will score here. And look at the blind side here. Hello! Well, the pressure, massive. the pressure came from Corey Hurrawira. That's what caused Bogle to drop that, and here they come. And they take it ahead. I think that's Fisher was underneath that tackle. He's going to play the ball about eight metres out. Leota, Leota charges the line. Leota flicks it out the back to Luke. Luke quickly gets it away. It goes to May. May gets it away back. It goes on the outside. Taking the ball to the line is Hurrawira. Hurrawira, he's got buried underneath three or four tacklers there. Can he get it down? I don't think he can. Held up. And I reckon his real best option there would have been to give the ball immediately to Jennings. They had a three on two out there. Yep. And it was... Well, came on the back of a good offload from Leota. They just can't handle it at the moment. They're looking ominous here, Penrith. Ball comes out now. And oh, flying out of the line. Gee, there's a great tackle made there. It was a tackle that had to be made because Naden was moving up into the line as they quickly put a ball in. The ball's a grubber kick. It comes off a manly foot and then trying to pick it up on the left side of the field. And Nisi loses control of it. Luckily for Manly, it hit a manly player's foot and not a manly player's hand. So there'll be a knock-on against Penrith and the opportunity uh, does go literally west. Oh, bad play from Nisi. I mean, he was never going to pick that up and score. They ruled... It played out. The ball was played out. If it goes into touch, they get another set of six here, the Panthers. And Easy should have just let that go into touch. They get the scrum feed again. They have Manly under pressure. That does really release a hell of a lot of pressure for Manly here. Now the Manly side have just got to make sure they get through their set of six here and get to the last tackle, get a decent kick, and they're going to get a penalty. That's going to help. And that, You know what, that... That could be a turning point at this game. Manly come back and score some points here. It's on the back of Anisi's really poor play then. High shot on Trebojevic. And uh, I think it was the, the block forward, Redizard, who got pinged. Gee, I thought they had a chance on the other side, though, J- da- uh, yeah. Darrow. When Harawira went on his own, he had Jennings on his outside, and Jennings had Dylan Edwards on his outside. I, I, I thought all he had to do was put it through the hands, and they must have scored. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they would have, but he just decided to go on his own. He very nearly oh, got yeah. there. Oh, not very not nearly got there. I mean, it's easy when playing the game up here, isn't it? Simple. Especially with a T-shirt and shorts on like you. And here they go yeah. on the, the centre part of the Who field. It's that? actually a 2GB it's top going, like yours, Dave. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I was talking about your, your lovely, elegant shorts. Now, Trebojevic okay. comes in, and Trebojevic is down there from Lowe's, are they? They're cargo, yeah. Lowe's ones. Yes, Lowe's. They're on special at the moment. Are they? Ball, ball comes back the open side to Knight, and Knight throws a couple of dummies, and he charges Please downfield. Charge. Well, this is, of course, on the back of the penalty. They've got within range to score a try here. Trebojevic, Trebojevic tries to get there on his own. Trebojevic reaches out with his big right arm as he got there. He's gone horribly close. The referee says no. Wow. Geez, I thought he got there, Trebojevic. Would have thought this was worthwhile having a look at. He just bumped off two players there. No, he's short of the line there. He got it right, the referee. Somehow they managed to stop him. But it's just the ease at which he just bumps players off, Trebojevic. So he's about, what is he, six foot four or something, they tell me. But he's not that big 
physically, I don't think, is he? Well, let's go down to the sideline eye, courtesy of the star, Sydney, because it, all that hap happened not far from where Chris Warren is sitting. Yeah, right, Daryl. He, he does it with such ease. And uh, he's not huge, but he's still growing. Uh, he'd be six foot, six foot one, I'd reckon. Uh, but still a lot of growth left in uh, young Tom Trebojevic. But he, he just ghosts his way into the attacking line. He did it last week in Melbourne against the Cowboys. He doesn't look like he's moving terribly fast, but he's very, very elusive and strong and unlucky not to come up with that one held up uh, on the last tackle. As uh, the Penrith Panthers have the ball comes to May, and May uh, gets a, a kick in downfield. It's picked up now by the left winger and Bogle, and Bogle brings the ball back, and he's tackled about 22 metres out from his own goalpost. Northern end of the field, 19 to go in the first half. Low scoreboard. Panthers 12 lead the Sea Eagles nil as Manly worked the ball back to the left side of the field. But again, almost a try again then, Darrell. Conceded because someone gave a penalty away. Yeah, exactly. Don't give penalties away. You won't be down the other end with cheap metres as Garner brings the ball back now for the Manly Sea Eagles. He'll play the ball 12 short of halfway. Pratt comes back to the open side to Pearsall. Pearsall gets it away and bring it up as Raymond. He was the one that brought off that brilliant tackle in uh, that set leading up to the Please, mistake from Anisi. It was a beauty. He flew out of the line and put the pressure on that prevented Penner from scoring in that set as they bring the ball back strongly now, Manly. And, in fact, there's a strip there. Surely that's two on one. It, it was. It was Oliver Clark who made the strip. He should have known better than that. He's been impressive today, Oliver Clark. He's a, he's a big, raw bone thing, blonde hair. Uh, love his name, Oliver Clark. Another wonderful name there. Goes with Billy Bainbridge. But uh, he did strip that. I mean, that was just a ridiculous bit of play there from Oliver. They're going to kick for touch here. They, you know, they, they keep the pressure up here. It's only a matter of time before they score. If they can control the ball here, Manly, Penrith have got to be starting to tie. Manly have had a little bit of ball in the last hey boys, five minutes. So Manly, on the back of that penalty, have got the ball and they take it ahead through the lock forward Cox and he's tackled about 22 Bruce metres out in the goalpost at the Penrith's end of the field. The southern end is Pratt opposite up tonight. They come back the open side. Pearsall, Pearsall tried to keep it alive. He did eventually. It came up a Penrith player's arm and flew into the arms of Jesse Rahman. And so they've got the ball, Manly, with six to go as it's fed away to the winger on this side, Mitch Thomas. And Thomas, the western side, we're on. And Thomas will play the ball 15 in from touch. It comes now to Pratt. Pratt long pass to Pearsall. Pearsall in turn to Travers. On it goes then to Garner. Garner tries to find a passage down the centre. He's tackled about five metres out from the goalpost. Southern end of the field. They'll go back to Pratt. Pratt holds it up. Flying out of the line. There was a man who brought the defence forward. But flying onto the ball, Trebojevic gets a lovely pass. I think it was Pearsall that threw the ball. They flew out of the line, Penrith. They got Pearsall, but Pearsall had the wherewithal to, to offer up a lovely short ball into a hole. And who was there to take it? Tom Trebojevic, manly on the board, on the low side scoreboard. Panthers 12, Seagulls 4. They just can't stop him. He's just too good for this grade. He's a first grader and in fact he's more than a first grader. He'll he'll play representative football this bloke but that was just brilliant from him. The ball as you said on the outside came from his 5'8", Will Pearsall. He sort of just popped the ball up and really gave I think Trebojevic an opportunity to run where he wanted to. Basically when he got the ball he got it. He fended off one of the defenders. I think it might have been Luau. He fended off with his left hand and just did it effortlessly, went straight through the meat of two Panthers defenders there and just improved his position. Geez, he's a good player. I mean, I know we've been saying it all year, but he is a, he's a future superstar, Trebojevic. He'll, he'll play for New South Wales one day, fullback, no doubt. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Well, it's nice to have so many class players around that that might be available to play for New South Wales. We, we don't say is it too often. <laughs> I bet he is. Well, he lives on the north side. Let's get him. You'll claim him. I'll do. I bet you do. I know. We, I know he's not. And Chris Warren will tell you exactly why he's not very shortly, as uh, we're going to see Pratt, the hooker, Hugh Pratt, the the goal kicker. He's about 11 metres out, almost in front of the southern goalpost. There's the kick, and he adds the two points. And on the low scoreboard, Panthers 12, Seagulls 6, 16 to go in the first half. There's no way in the world, I would presume, Chris Warren, that Queensland could claim Trebojevic as a Queenslander. No, he's uh, he's north of Wakehurst Parkway. Uh, a wonderful family. Uh bit of an association with them with the uh, Monobel Raiders club. My young fella plays at the same club and Jake and Tom, they're there to watch the under sixes, under sevens pretty much all throughout the day. They're on the on the sausage sizzle with their with their dad John. It's uh, the mums in the canteen running things as well. It's uh, a wonderful family, and the Monavale Raiders, uh, the club, really is built around the Trebojevic family. So it's it's great to see both Tom and Jake uh, making inroads in the game. So there we are. Wakehurst Parkway isn't in Queensland. North of it is. Oh, north of it is. <laughs> I knew you'd have an answer. Here comes Manly as they bring the ball back. 
And yet it's amazing, isn't it? Penrith looked as if they were going to easily make it 18-0. A little mistake and a giving a penalty away, and all of a sudden Manly hit back. And it's uh, Walker, I should say Parker, who's playing the ball, and they come back to this side of the field, the western side, and Pearsall, who's starting to find a couple of little holes on the western side. Pratt out a dummy half. He runs into a Penrith player who is blatantly offside, and uh, Pratt bumps off, goes ahead. Referee says, just play on. Didn't affect the play. Ball comes back to the right side of the field, goes to Pearsall. He puts a kick in. It takes a deflection. And uh, it sits up beautifully in the end for Naden. And Naden throws a horrible pass, but it's accurate. It was a pass that went about 30 metres under the goalpost to the right winger. And Dylan Edwards accepted it. But, gee, that's... That's one, well, I suppose, you, I must admit, he did look where he was passing it, but it wasn't unlike Kenny Dow's pass that was aimed at the fullback last week, but didn't quite get there, Darrell. Yeah, no, that was probably a bit better, that pass, but it was a long one, as you said, similar, except it was Keep different moved. side of the field to the other side. They're just, at the moment, the Panthers, as I said, they haven't had a lot of ball in the last few minutes or so, but it is Robert Jennings again. Every time he gets the ball, he's making ground, Robert Jennings. Gee, he's having a good game. Luke had a dummy half. He looks for a runner, and they're taking it ahead strongly here, the Panthers. They've got it about 28 metres out in the goal line. Luke to get past Leather. He offers the ball up down to Luai. Luai pumps it high in the air. First bomb of the afternoon. It comes off a manly player. I think it's come off a manly player and into touch. What's the referee going to rule here? I had a feeling it came off Mitch Thomas and then into touch and that's what the touch judge and the referees have ruled. And so Pendrith will get, rather luckily I might add, a scrum feed 10 out from the goal line at 20 in from touch. Well, they're getting a bit of luck with the ball in the air to the manly wingers. We saw Bogle drop one cold before and on that occasion, he was under a bit more pressure this time, Mitch Thomas, but he's put it down as well. You can tell by his desperation to get back to the ball before it went into touch um, that, he, that he, he felt it came off him, and I think they've been proven absolutely correct there. I'm just showing a replay of the kickoff here from from the fullback Trebojevic. I'm not sure why they would show that, but anyway, he's a great opportunity for the Panthers. They're only 10 metres out from the Manly Seagulls line here. Right, I'm sure they've got Go something out. planned. Go now, they send the ball. I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. As the ball goes away to Jennings. Jennings gets on the outside of his man. Jennings, as Darrell has pointed out repeatedly, easily gets past his man and inside the winger and scores Pedra's third try. 16-6, kick to come on the low scoreboard. He's a quality player. He's played a bit of first grade this year, I think, Robert Jennings. And clearly, he's the brother of Michael Jennings. There's a few of them there. But gee whiz, what a quality player he looks to be as well. He got the ball here. Terrible defence from Manly. I've got to say, they were they were they were just in all in a bunch basically. They just gave them the room on the outside. And you don't need to give Robert Jennings too much room. He got on the outside of Demetrio, who as I said before is a back rower sort of thrown into the centres. I reckon over 100 metres, Jennings had probably beat him by 15 metres. And once he got on the outside of him, it was good night nurse. He just fended him off, scored, carried him over to get it down oh, 5 or 10 metres in from touch. That was just too simple. Straight off a scrum feed, out to Jennings. Pitiful defence from Manly on their left side. Try to the Panthers. Yeah, the thing about Trebojevic, he, he has been playing with a, a hamstring heavily strapped in recent weeks. Yeah. Didn't last week, but the week before he did. I'm just wondering whether uh, whether that's what they were showing. There was a little tweak or something, whether he jumped on a leg or something after it, thinking that he might have yeah. tweaked that again. Darrell, I'm not sure, but I couldn't imagine just showing him kicking off again sometime later unless there was some indication he might have just tweaked that hamstring problem of his. Well, he might have, but he's, he scored a try since he's kicked mm. off. And, he didn't look to be too troubled by a hammy then. He, he looks okay out there. I think he's okay. But there's this young bloke trying to kick another goal. Dylan Edwards. He stabs at him, doesn't he? He doesn't follow through very well. He just stabs at him. There's the kick again from Dylan Edwards. It's wide out, and this time it goes across the face. Doesn't hit the uprights. Just keeps going. Would have been a lovely ball to the far corner or the far post if you were playing a game perhaps uh, called soccer, but not much good playing rugby league. 16-6 on the low scoreboard, 11 to go in the first half. Penrith lead Manly as we go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star, Sydney. Here's Chris Warren. Yeah, Robert Jennings, it's a very handy gene pool, isn't it? He's a real athlete and a huge future ahead of uh, that youngster. He's had a handful of games in the top flight for Penrith, and you can almost, well, you can see, they do stand out, don't they? As easy as Trebojevic did it at the other end, well, Robert Jennings uh, just carved his way through almost untouched. So the more ball they have down there, the, the manly goal line defence at the moment really needs to pick up its game. Yeah, first graders at this level, especially those who had a bit of experience. Don't, they look like cheese and chalk, don't they? Well, every try they've scored has basically been on that side of the field, the Panthers. They've scored three, and they've all been down their right side. One of them came from the dummy half, and the other two um, 
from Tyrone May and also Jennings have been on that side of the paddock. Okay, there they come, the Panthers, as they work the ball back to the halfway, and it's played now, and through the, the hooker's hands, Luke, it goes on to the big fella, and this is Leota, and Leota's tackle 45 metres out, they go back to the right, it goes to May, May gets it away to Harawira, Harawira puts a kick in, it came off a manly player's foot, not played at, says the referee, they have another little chip down, courtesy of Edwards, the winger, winger the, the kick is a good one, because Trebojevic has to go back to his in goal, he got an awkward bounce, it bounced rather high and in the end the Penrith defence got down there and as a result Trebojevic played it and then immediately they've had another run and they haven't got to the 10 metre mark, great bit of football, great field position at the moment for the Panthers. Yeah, well, they've got no troops back there, they've just got back there now man they're getting very tired because of the heat down there obviously and Penrith running them about a bit here, here's Demetrio here running across field. As I said, he can beat a player, Demetrio, but defensively he might have some issues. Well, he ne they need him to do a bit of work. And now a ball is knocked down and knocked down by Penrith. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm not sure why he did that. They were getting towards the end of the tackle. Felino tried to knock the ball out of the Penrith hooker's hands and all he did was concede a set of six and now Rahman brings it back and uh, Manley might make them pay for that silly error. As he gets the ball away, does Rahman at the last minute. It goes to Travers, to Pearsall. Pearsall throws a dummy. There was a man between he and the support player and so he takes takes the tackle, oh about 42 no, metres out from Penrith's goalpost, low what scoreboard, nine to go in the first half, Penrith lead 16-6 over the Manly Moringa Seagulls in the Holden to Cup Grand Final, on a beautiful day here in Sydney, Grand Final Day 2015, it's played to Travers, Travers the halfback for Manly, gets the ball away, Ellis is out there, he's the 14th for Manly, I should say uh, Hines is out there, he's the 14th for Manly, and they'll play the ball, around about uh, 15 metres out goes Trebojevic for a gallop, and he's put down, about 12 metres out on the goal line, they'll play the ball back to Travers, it goes to Pearsall, Pearsall back, it goes, and then does, he got the ball back to Pearsall, and he goes horribly close to scoring as Nico Holmes got it and gave it straight back to him, they're going to play the ball close to the goal line here, Manly, they're not far away from scoring their second try, ball comes out the back, where's Trebojevic, here's the kick across field from Hines, Trebojevic coming through, but getting back there and taking it superbly, is the winger, in fact, who's back there to take that in the end, I think it was the winger, it's Anisi who's taken it on the fall and done wonderfully well, because flying through was the big praying mantis. But he looks like a praying mantis compared to these kids. Tom Travoyevich, but Anisi held his ground and did wonderfully well. Yeah, just watching him running back on side here. Now he's on the wing at the moment, Travoyevich. I, I think he might have a bit of a problem. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but he looks to have a bit of a strained gait to me from the Travoyevich sense, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and now we're, here's Tua Gamala who's out there for Penrith. Big, long, striding fellow is tackled 40 metres out. He'll play the ball to Luke, and Luke goes back the open side. It comes to May. May decides to have a crack on his own. We haven't seen him go for a run yet. He's beaten one. He's beaten two. He changes the ball from the left to the right and back to the right, then to the left. He gets it away to Harawira. He does a, a big pirouette. He gets away from one, gets away from two, gets away from three. He's making giant strides downfield. Harawira trying to link up on the left, and he can't do so. He almost got all the way through second tackle penalty against Manly. That was a great run from Harawira, wasn't it? It was just breeze. Clearly he's a Kiwi, but he's got a bit of a flowing locks. He holds the ball in one hand. Um, again, great run from him, but it was Travoyevich. He came in off his wing to get him, and they give away the penalty. It's a great opportunity for the Panthers to put more points on the board here. As we see the big number 16, Pua, going ahead. And he's brought down about five minutes out in the goal line. You're holding on to the ball. Yeah, this is another penalty against Manly, against Travers. Wait, wait. Okay, push one ref, guys. One ref. One ref, yeah. Good. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Manly come hey, charging down the centre and Tui Gamala's going to be tackled a few metres out as Luke gets the ball back to the right side it comes to May, May gets it away on it goes to Naden, Naden tries to get through he's tackled, he's about 9 metres out in the goal line, he'll play the ball 10 in from touch Jennings comes back the open side, Harawira he gets the ball away and through the hands it comes and it went uh, through Ellis's hands away to Pua and Pua has lost the ball have lost the ball here, Penrith. Just lost their way a bit there, too, for a second or two. Yeah, I think they have lost their way. See what the referee's Six. got to say. He's called time off three, here. Mate. I think they have a challenge. Yeah. Real, real lost ball into an opponent by Panthers. Well, I've got to, I imagine this is a challenge. They've got they've got the challenge in each half. They've got two challenges in each half, I think, isn't it? I think they're allowed two. That's well, a successful one. Well, the bottom line is they haven't had one yet, so why not use it with six minutes on the clock if there's some doubt? Mm. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I like the idea of this. I know it slows the game down. I'm anti-technology, but I, I think sometimes this is not a bad idea. Uh, for mine, I think he's just dropped that ball. Well, I, I, I think you're right. I think they've just challenged and hoping something might show up here. But just on the first looks, 
Well, well, I think he's just dropped it, Pooh. Let's have a look. Well, Pooh has got up thinking he, it was stripped, but every player that loses the ball has just gone on is going to get up and do that. Now, around him, Parker was one of the players around him. I'm not sure who the other one was. I'm just trying to think it was Garner. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, what do you reckon? Let's go down to the sideline, courtesy of uh, the star in Sydney. I don't know it's a long way from you, Chris, but you might have a bit of angled on it than us. No, not really, mate, to be honest with you. Uh, it looks like he's trying to pop the ball, but I don't know if it's been stripped or not, but either way, it's a real let-off for Manly. Uh, the three Penrith tries have all come pretty soft tries at that when they've had uh, the ball in good field position, but it is a, uh, a Manly scrum feed. So uh, they did challenge that, I think, but unsuccessfully. So Manly will get the scrum, loose head and feed in front of the black dot. I thought I just heard the referee yeah. say no more challenges for this half. So, so I can only presume they'll have one challenge in on that. One in, unsuccessful in, challenge. Uh, the ball comes back to the left side. Well, I suppose I looked at the clock, Darren, so well, we probably won't get another opportunity. Let's have a crack. Yeah, big, big difference. And uh, perhaps they are a loose pass by Manly. I tell you what, they almost they almost threw the game away literally because the pass went behind the left winger Bogle and he had to sprint back and gather as Penrith was flying through down that right side. And it could have easily been another Penrith try as Dimitri who brings the ball back and he's going to be playing the ball about 30 metres out of his own goal line. 12 in from touch on the eastern side of the field. Five to go in the first half. Holden Cup grand final. Panthers 16 lead Manly 6. Penalty against Penrith. Hand on the ball. Tackle four. Coach yeah. killers, aren't they? Oh, he milked that. I think he milked that. In saying that, I thought there was a flop from one of the Penrith players in the tackle. You know what? I don't think the Penrith players had anything to do with that. He tried to play the ball he was just getting to his feet. He dropped Holding. it not and he's penalised him. I mean, I, that's just, Go. that's what really annoys me in rugby league. The, you know, ref, every time a ball is dropped, the referee wants to penalise the defensive Hold. side. Go Hines gets the ball and he uploads to Knight and Knight takes it ahead and Knight spins out of the oh, defence and he's still in. going. He's oh, still going. Knight, he gets out of one, he gets out of two, he gets out of two more challenges and he's going to be put down eventually. But I tell you what, there were a number of blokes that came at him that realised he's got a fend. Well, they all missed him. All four of them who tackled him all missed him at some stage. Ball fed back to the left side as it quickly goes through the hands again. And here's Nico Hines. Nicholas Hines, he's tackled. About 15 metres out on the goal line. They'll come back the open side. And the ball is fed again towards the centre of the field. And Manly take it ahead and they're going to play the ball. About five metres out on the goal line. Pratt's in at dummy half. He throws a pass. It comes away to Pearsall. Second man play to Rahman. Rahman gets it away to the winger. He's sprinting for the line. He had an opportunity. He put his head down straight away. I reckon Mitch Thomas scores, but he seemed to Hold stop line. short of the line, and then the, the opportunity for the cover defence gave itself an opportunity to stop the try, and they did. Short pass in the middle of the field, and they're taking the ball to Garner, and Garner sweep pass three, would be Penrith defenders to score a manly try. That's a great try. That is an absolutely great try to Luke Garner, because he got the ball on the back of a, a manly player being harassed by a Penrith player. He was going to kick the ball. It was the last tackle. He was going to kick the ball here, the 5-8, I think it was. Yeah, End up yeah. Throwing it to Garner. Garner stepped through one, stepped through another, stepped off his left, went past another. That's a brilliant individual try from him. He fended off one here. I'm just looking at how many players he beat there. He's beaten one. Another one has just fallen off him there as he runs through a gap, fends off another player. Then the 13, Izzard has a crack at him belatedly. Too late. He scores a fantastic individual try for them. They're going to be down by four points here. I mean, this has been a remarkable comeback from them because they've looked outclassed at times in the first half, Manly, but that is a great individual try there to Luke Garner. And, uh, Chris Warren, there's a bit of deja vu in this. Last week, North Queensland looked to have Manly flogged all over the park. In the end, Manly won it. They're hanging in there. I was going to say exactly the same thing. It's, uh, it's almost a mirror image of last week's game, and they can do that to you, this Manly team. If you give them an even share of possession and give them uh, a bit of time on the dance floor at the opposition end, they will come up with points, but their own goal line defence has been pretty fragile as he uh, lines up to add the extra two. So here he is, Pratt from right in front of the sticks, or just to the right of the sticks. And, uh, well, it looked as if they'd go away with it early, Penrith, as Pratt moves in. There's the kick from Pratt on the low scoreboard. 16-12, two minutes to go in the first half. And uh, it's Penrith leading. Yep. It's hard to believe this. Penrith probably had a great opportunity to lead 18-0 yep. at one stage. Absolutely. They squandered it. They gave a penalty away. Manly came down and scored. Here they are again. They conceded six to go at a time when they didn't have to. And then they get over there. They concede a penalty, albeit Darrell didn't think the penalty was 100% kosher. But then they get on, get down the other end. They score. I mean, 
Oh, well, it's easy to well, say. Hey, Both I... sides have basically set the opposition up to scoring tries by conceding penalties. Well, it's just, you know, a reflection of what the under-20s has been like since it's been the competition, David. It's quite often it's, you know, oh. so, such high-scoring games. Oh, if you, you score, we score. I mean, this will be all based on ball control. I know we say it all the time and it's quite boring, but ball control is going to really... I think, win the game for one of these two sides. Penrith, I think, are the better side. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but they've they've shown scant respect for the ball in the last 10 minutes, the Panthers. And Demetrio brings it back for Manly. He's going to be playing at 15, his own side of halfway. Back it comes to the centre of the field and Pearsall. Inside ball to Trebojevic. Trebojevic, oh, they almost ankle tapped him from behind. And just as well they did it, put him off balance. And by the time they put him off balance, there was just enough defence there to cut the gap down as Pearsall goes to the line. He's having having a big impact on this game, isn't he? The ball comes away. Hines puts a little grubber kick in and beautifully picked up by Naden. And Naden ring brings the ball back, okay, the Penrith ball back, and and, uh, and uh, skipper, no. and he's going to play the ball around about uh, ten out from his own goal line as Anisi goes for a gallop, and he's tackled about 15, 25 metres out from his own goal post, southern end of the field, low score ball. We're almost at half time. Penrith 16, Manly 12. As the Penrith work the ball 35 out from their own goal line, 20 in from touch, eastern side of the field, and the ball is played, and they'll come back and take it up now as Tua Gamala. I know she was down injured at one stage, but he's certainly down. Injured yeah, after the Garner try. Guys. He'll get up and play the ball eight short of halfway. They come back the open side and they try and get through the line. Move almost there, did. Now. Pass yeah, almost got popped. Exactly. Here's Luke out of dummy half. Decides to Outside. go on his own and then he puts a grubbing kick in that'll test Trebojevic's leg out if anyone comes flying down this left side from a Penrith, Penrith side. They don't. Trebojevic picks it up, gives the ball to the, the touch. He says, well, I know we're not going to pack the scrum. They won't pack the scrum. The siren will go and that'll be all she wrote for the first half of the Holden Cup Grand Final. And and at half time, it's Penrith 16 leading Manly 12. And for Penrith, the try scorers Jennings, May, and Luke. And Edwards has kicked two goals from three attempts. And for the Sea Eagles, Trebojevic and Garner, the try scorers. And Pratt has kicked two from two. So at half time, it is 16 12 in favour of Penrith over Manly as we go to the half time break. Courtesy of Tyre Power. Is that your new car coming out there, Marcus? I wish. <laughs> new, new Holden, is it? The New Holden, of course. Of course, of course our sponsors. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. Tire uh, power, ty, ty power, power, uh, tyres, too, I noticed. Oh, you love the sponsors. <laughs> Good as having David Morrow on commercial radio. And, and, and Brilliant. It's a, and it's a coat tyre vehicle to hold it as well. Oh. <laughs> and you know what? They've just been at McDonald's and the sponsors <laughs> getting a fries oh, and coke for a dollar. Don't you know that. <laughs> settle down, settle down. 16 12. Baby, settle down. <laughs> 16 12. Penrith leading Manly at half time in the first of the grand finals here at ANZ Stadium. The Holton Cup for Shimano. Still to come, the Interstate Championship Grand Final. It is Ipswich taking on Newcastle, the winner of the New South Wales and Queensland Cup. And then, of course, the big one, Ray Hadley, to bring you all of the colour and excitement as Brisbane takes on the North Queensland Cowboys from 7.25. We've got a big stage set up at the northern end of the ground, no doubt, where Cole Chisel will be performing some of their hits. k no doubt, Bow River. Uh, it's all going to be happening here. Flame trees as well. And the crowd is really building up too. Uh, quite a, a good crowd at the moment. I'd estimate to say probably around the 10,000 mark, maybe 10 to 15,000 to watch these lower grade grand finals, which is terrific. Now, question three in the Blackwoods footy quiz today for that fantastic prize, the JBS 66-piece metric and ANF socket set with three eighth and half inch square drive sockets and accessories valued at $149. Question three, the NRL grand final trophy immortalises two legends of the game, Norm Proven and Arthur Hurst. The NRL Grand Final Trophy immortalises two legends of the game, Norm Proven and Arthur Who. If you've got all three answers, give us a ring on 1300 722 873 and the prize is yours. It's all thanks to JBS and Blackwoods. 16-12, Penrith leads Manly in the under-20s Grand Final. The Holden Cup will take a break and when we come back, a look at the first half action. Thanks to tyre power, get the power of Australia's biggest independent tyre retailer. 16-12, Penrith leads Manly. NRL Grand Final Day on 2GB is thanks to Holden. The Deedees Group, Ajax Foundry, Sage Institute of Fitness and Palmetto Turf. Grand final day 2015 with the continuous call team here at ANZ Stadium. 16-12, the score at halftime in the under-20s grand final. The Holden Cup for Shimano. Penrith leading the Manly Seagulls. We'll have a look at the first half action in just a moment for uh, tyre power and also uh, our good friends 
uh, for all of our sponsors here as well. But just for our listeners on 2GB, now a serious accident has blocked Punchbowl Road in both directions at Belfield. So Punchbowl Road in both directions at Belfield. The accidents occurred at the intersection of Punchbowl Road and Margaret Street. Emergency services are currently on site. Now, there was a an occupant trapped in the vehicle. I'm not too sure if that occupant has been conveyed to hospital as yet, but local diversions are available. However, motorists are being strongly urged to avoid the area and consider an alternative route. Due to the serious nature of the incident, there is no forecast available as to when Punchbowl Road will reopen. Further information can be attained at livetraffic.com or you can call the traffic information line on 132701. So Punchbowl Road closed in both directions at Belfield. And before I get the thoughts of the boys on that first half action in the Holden Cup, the Blackwoods Grand Final footy quiz winner today is Jim from Hornsby. Well done to you, Jimmy. You answered the three questions correct. When did North Queensland last play in the Grand Final? 2005 it was. They lost to the West Tigers. What is the name of the medal presented to the NRL Grand Final man of the match? Clive Churchill medal, of course. And the NRL Grand final trophy immortalises two legends of the game, Norm Proven and Arthur Summons both players embracing after the 1963 grand final at the SCG. So Jim from Hornsby you've picked up the uh, JBS 66 piece metric and ANF socket set with three eighth and half inch square drive sockets at accessories valued at $149 it's all thanks to JBS and Blackwoods and big thank you to Blackwoods for their continued support in season 2015. Alright let's have a look at the first half action thanks to tyre power get the power of Australia's biggest independent tyre retailer 1612 Darrell Brown Roman, the Panthers lead the Manly Sea Eagles. Yeah, Penrith looked to have the game in control, but every time they look like they might just go away and put a decent margin on them, the Sea Eagles keep fighting back, don't they? Um, you know, I, I think the Sea Eagles are right in this game. I mean, clearly the scoreline tells you that indicates that 16 points to 12. I just think Penrith need to go back to what they were doing well and doing well earlier. They were controlling the ball. Their forwards were, were hitting it and making great metres up the middle of the ruck. The hooker was creating a bit of carnage up the middle. Sonny Luke and then I think they just went off their game plan a little bit there. They ended up giving a bit too much ball to the Manly Seagulls, Mark. And, and as I said, though, you know, 12 0 they led, then it got to 12 6, then 16 6, 16 12. Every time Penrith scored, Manly answered. And a couple of, I mean, I, I, you just look at this side, and I mean, it's so easy just to focus on Tom Trebojevic, but. Everything that's good that comes from them is from him. Will Pearsall's having a good game. 5 8, he's creating a few problems for them. But other than that, uh, you know, if, if the Panthers can somehow find a way of shutting down Trebojevic, and it's obviously easier said than done, uh, they should go on and win the game. But I think they'd still be, wor they'd be worried at the moment because every time they. They do something and do something decent. Manly have an answer. Well, you're right. And, and David Morrow, I mean, Daryl's right. It was a bit tit for tat in that first half. So at halftime, 16-12, the, the Penrith Panthers holding that narrow lead over Manly. Uh, I'm guessing David Heath, the coach of the under-20 side for Manly, will be saying to his troops, we're still in this, boys. You've got to go out there, chance your arm, throw the footy around. Uh, obviously, give it to Tom Trebojevic, who's looked the danger man for the Seagulls in that first half. And they're, they're going to be right in it right up until the 80th minute of this grand final. Well, the thing that they did last week was they hung in there. They knew that... They knew the other mob probably had more individual school than the North Queensland, but somehow they hung into the game, and when it mattered, they were there in front when the judge called a halt, and that's the same sort of scenario that seems to be unfolding here. I mean, Penrith go to the right side, they score, but then whoever gives penalties away is giving ground away. When the opposition gets down there, they put points on, and tell you who's having a wow of a game is that 5'8", Will Pearce. Mm. He's, uh, since, he started, since he's gone to the line... Uh, they've looked more dangerous on this right side of the field. And early on, he was playing both sides, but he seems to be playing more on the right side now, Darrell. Yeah. And when he goes to the line, well, you know, there's a beautiful pass for Garner, and uh, he was there to put Trebojevic in. So, uh, well, yeah. see, I think Trebojevic, the alarm bells start ringing wherever he is, and he's sort of hanging around Pearsall. And there was an occasion there where I think it might have been Pearsall who threw a cutout ball, cut Trebojevic out, and the defence came up. It was when the winger made a run down this, it went this Tom, right when side. I thought Thomas probably could have pinned his yeah. ears back and scored, yeah. Well, Trebojevic was sort of the decoy. They faceballed Trebojevic, and it, it just sucked in a couple of Panthers defenders and gave, as you said, Mitch Thomas an opportunity on the outside, but they didn't score. But they ended up scoring, I think, from that set of six. But oh, they're right in this, man. They are, look. If you ask me who I think will win, I think Penrith have got the better quality players, mm. but I, I'm just not convinced they're playing well enough at the moment, the Panthers. They mainly seem to have their 
Every time Penrith do something, Manly are there to, you know, sort of cut it down. All right, we'll go down to Chris Warren in a moment, but I'll bring Piggy Riddell in just before I bring in Piggy. Uh, we've been in contact with the New South Wales Police. They say they were called to a head-on crash on Punchbowl Road at Belfield. Both drivers have now been freed and taken to hospital. We don't have an update on their condition just yet. All lanes of Punchbowl Road are now open. All lanes of Punchbowl Road are now open, which is terrific news. That, uh, our thoughts are with those that have been taken to hospital from the pictures that I was sent on social media. It was a very nasty crash. They're on Punchbowl road at Belfield. So, uh, obviously traffic heavy in the area, but please be patient. It was quite a serious accident. Piggy, 16-12, Penrith mm. leading Manly uh, at half time. Uh, thanks to Ty Power. What were your thoughts on that first one? Yeah, look, I enjoyed I enjoyed, enjoyed watching uh, the, the first half of football. Uh, pretty similar to what the boys said. The Panthers looked uh, like they were doing it in a canter, really, early on there. They got away to a good lead, but uh, Manly, they just they just kept keep fighting back. I was really impressed with the, the two back rowers for Penrith. I think they really look uh, nice, tall, uh, athletic back rowers. Uh, a bit of an offload, I think. A couple of times on the on the right edge as well for the for the Penrith side. Uh, uh, if they keep playing to Jennings uh, and I think it's Fisher Harris on that side, uh, they're going to do them a, a lot of damage. But those two players in particular, I was uh, uh, very impressed with in that first half. Thank you. I had a look through the binoculars. That's Tony our tech sitting down there, not Chris Warren. <laughs> so we won't be going down to Chris just yet. Sixteen points to twelve. Penrith lead the Manly Sea Eagles. His hair at half time, exactly right. He's got the TGB shirt on. It was uh, quite deceptive. Uh, let's go to some emails. They're coming oh, through. Chris, G'day, boys. Chris would be, be listening to the two coaches. He'll be finding out what the coaches have got to say. Exactly right. Loving the call, sitting at my home beach. Uh, Bally Point. Can't wait for the big game a little bit later on. Thank you, uh, Ray. Keep them coming at 2GB.com. Happy birthday, Mark. We share the same day, unfortunately. We have to work on our birthday, but we'll enjoy the footy tonight with a few cold ones. I'm a Bronco supporter, but would love to see the Cowboys win this one. Good on you, Anthony. Great to have you with us at a beautiful part of the world in Queensland. Bar Calden. Uh, one of my old flatmates, Josh Fleming, who's taking over from Alan Thomas as the uh, race caller in Brisbane uh, come Boxing Day. Uh, he's a boy from Bar Calden, uh, Josh Fleming. So well done to you, Josh. From... Yeah, he got given the gig oh, during the week. So great. He's a great kid. Terrific young caller great as well. Kid. And spent most of his time cutting his teeth in Western Queensland. Yeah, and he, uh, I know he was apprenticed to Alan Thomas too when he first joined uh, Sky Racing as well. So well done to you, Josh. And I know he's a big Bronco supporter. He'll be coming out here this afternoon. 16 points to 12. Penrith leads Manly in the under-20s grand final. The Holden Cup for 2015. Crowd building on grand final day here at ANZ Stadium and beautiful conditions. Sun is shining and the playing surface bathed in sunshine at the moment. Expecting a top temperature of around 35 degrees. We're probably pushing about 32, 33 at the moment as I look towards the big screen. The little temperature gauge came up earlier but at the moment 16, 12. Penrith leading Manly. We'll take a break when we come back. The second half action in the Holden Cup grand final. NRL grand final day on 2GB is thanks to Holden. Manshake, ground forklifts, liquor land, flower power and fair dinkum sheds. Yeah, perfect timing as the Manly Seagulls come out for the second half. 16-12, the Panthers lead Manly at halftime in the under-20s. Uh, thanks to Shimano, the Holton Cup grand final. Penrith to get us back underway. Manly defending the southern end of the ground. Uh, no doubt we'll hear from Chris Warren in this second half. Thanks to the Star Sydney, the ultimate sports viewing destination. But let's think back up with David Morrow and Daryl Broman. Boys, 16-12, the Panthers leading Manly 40 minutes ahead of them to decide who takes home the trophy in season 2015 in the Holton Cup. And we see the Penrith Panthers make their way back out onto the park and Manly are already out there. And I know it's only a little thing, but uh, you know, the, the science says that wearing white jumpers as against darker jumpers and maroons dark, darker can actually make you... Uh, the heat's, heat's not quite as hard on the white jumpers and people say... Well, that, but, but science has proved that that's true. Is that true? Yeah, apparently. That, uh, OK, well, it's not an old wives' tale, is it? No, I'm going. Yeah. yeah, so Penrith... <laughs> I'm not saying that'll help them win the game. Well, Penrith have got black shorts on and Manly have got white shorts, so at least down below they'll be cooler. <laughs> <Right>. Manly. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah, I am with you. Yeah, anyway, Manly have got the ball from the kickoff and they're uh, down the southern end of the uh, the park in this second half with uh, the uh, Penrith Panthers defending the northern end, obviously, and 16 points to 12 the school board at half time. We'll go down to Chris Warren in just a second as the ball is going to be played here by Pratt, the hooker, and he uploads and it comes away to Hines and Heinz from Trebojevic and he gee, almost got on the outside of a couple of defenders on that uh, right side, Penrith's left side, the 
east and side of the ground here. He's going to play the ball 10 short of halfway line, and he'll play the ball eventually. And uh, the ball comes back the open side, and in the centre of the park, it's that try scorer Garner who's tackled. That five short of halfway gets up and plays it. They'll come back the left side, and the kick from Penrith goes over the head of the winger, and uh, racing back to grab the ball was Edwards, and then he decided to let uh, Naden come for it, and he went back to the centre of the park, Edwards, to make sure that his fullback had an option to pass, and Edwards takes the tackle about 15 out from his own goal line at northern end of the field, and a good bit of work there as Luai came charging in and got his side on the front foot. They made made an easy 10 metres there, the Panthers, with two minutes gone in the second half, no change to the half-time score, and the low scoreboard, Penrith 16, lead Manly 12, Chris Warren for the star, Sydney. What uh, what have you been able to glean during the halftime break? Uh, Dave, I, I gleaned as much as I could. Uh, Tom Travojevic, no injury worries with him, so he, he had a bit of a hamstring uh, problem over the last fortnight, but he's good as gold. I spoke to his older brother, Jake, who's uh, got the game day management, team management duties, um, but they're pretty happy with the way things are going uh, through the first half. They need to pick up their own goal line defence. They know that, and they just want to keep believing in each other. As uh, Here's Tom now taking it from uh, deep behind his own line. For Penrith Panthers, uh, the worrying thing for them is that if they think this match is going to be handed to them on a platter, they better think again. They've hammered Manly in all three times they've played them this season as, and as recently as week one of the finals, but um, their coach Cameron Seraldo said, look, guys, don't expect this game to come to you. You're really going to have to work hard for it in the second half. And that's certainly the case, of course. So they, they actually won the three games by an average of 22 points this year. So you know, mentally, I suppose, they think it's a, man, a walk in the park, but it won't be as the ball comes back to the left side. And here's Hines taking it ahead. And Hines finds a little hole. Then he offers the ball back. And all the ball is deemed to have come off the legs of a manly player. There was a hit. There was a knock on there. Ball goes back to the right side. And Pearsall pops a little kick over the top. That was straight down Naden's throat. And Naden said, thank you very much, as he brings it back. And he runs into Parker. And another, he'll play the ball about 25 metres out on the goal line, northern end of the field. So it's been pretty much tit-for-tat stuff in the opening couple of sets here of the second half. We're in the grand final of the Holden Cup, and the low scoreboard is 16-12 in favour of Penrith over Manly. Three minutes gone as the Panthers work it back towards the centre of the field and literally the centre of the field. There's seven metres their own side of halfway. Ball is taken by Luke out of dummy half. He gets over the halfway. He's taken there, and Cohen's one of the defenders. Ball comes back to this side of the field. Inside Bulgy, that was suspiciously forward as Rush taking the ball to the line, line there was Pua. He's tackled You're 39 right, metres out. Comes to the right side, the western side. Up goes the kick okay, from the 5-8 May. May. Coming down near the goal line. Trebojevic has it, right, seven, but the seven, chase seven, is seven, great. Seven, and he's put down and that's Harawira who got down there and effected a great tackle and Trebojevic at the player a metre out from his own goal line. And now the defence moves up quickly again. And Manly are five metres out from their own line on tackle too. Great kick, great chase. Yeah, it was. I think they need to just rethink about their kicking game because they had a bit of success in the first half, the Panthers when they put the ball in the air to both wingers I can't see Trebojevic dropping it too often but I think they just need to get into dummy half, a little bit dummy half scooting, get some get some momentum happening here, the Panthers, this has been a good set from them defensively, Manly struggling to get to their, well they're just over the 30 metre line here, this is tackle four I think Ball played to Bainbridge and away it goes to Pratt and Pratt gets it on now to uh, the replacement, Hines, who had all day to put a kick in and he looked up and said, well, there's nobody at home. This is a gem of a kick because the ball's gone all the way down to the in goal area and it's amazing how a great kick can rescue a poor set and he has kicked that 65, 70 metres and the chase was equal to the kick and now Penrith are struggling to get down to their own end. Five metres out in the goalpost, tackle two. Well, there's still about half a dozen of them coming back on side here. This is a great opportunity here for the Manly Seagulls if they can just aim up defensively here to get Penrith and keep them pinned in their own half. Here's a good run. I think it's from Izzard. Just a big run from, well, just first off the ruck, but he ran with great enthusiasm. Here's another big run from the back to him. Was it Tui Gamala? Tui Gamala. 12 metres out from the halfway line. Last play. May has the ball. He pumps it high in the air. It's going to go straight down Trebojevic's throat. Where's the danger going to be? He goes to the left, then swings back to the right, then comes down the centre. That's not the best way to start a set. Kick it straight down the fullback's throat and give him options left, right and centre as the ball is played by Manley and they've got the ball. Five short of halfway. Tell you what, great opportunity for him to go on the attack here as the ball comes back to the left side and McGreal's out there. Moses, Navarro, McGreal. He's going to play the ball 45 out from his own goal line. 
line. He plays for Manly. Ball fed away to Knight. And Knight bores a hole in them. Just goes straight and steady. And uh, as Chris pointed out earlier, normally plays the full 80 minutes, this fella. And he's going to get up and play the ball to Pratt. And he gets it away then. Hines offloads to Pearsall. Pearsall away to Trebojevic. And Trebojevic is put down about 25 metres out on the goal line. Last tackle coming up for Manly. Hines, I think they're going to go the short side. They are. Pearsall puts a grubbing kick back in towards the goal post. I think it'll go dead, but only just. It only easy, just easy, went easy. dead. Hines was flying, but the angle just wasn't quite there. And Pendrick, they'll make get the seven third. tackles the from third. the centre of their 20 metre line. And that is a huge relief for them as they bring it back right, through the winger Edwards really and his tackle. 35 out from his own goal line. And now they give a penalty away by tripping him as he went to get up and play the ball. Pendrick will kick for touch and they'll go on the attack from probably inside Manley's half. Yeah, good work there from Dylan Edwards. That was a really good... He got the ball and he came back with a little bit of intent. He got the, the 20 metre line, took the tap. He then got tripped as he got up to play the ball. It's a massive play from him. I mean, the space of... You know, 30 seconds, we've gone from Manly oh, kicking a ball dead oh, to Penrith oh, having a zero tackle on about the, what, the 40 metre line here Woo! of the Manly yeah, Seagulls. They're now under pressure on the back of some ill discipline. Ball played, and here's Tuagamala as he takes it ahead, and he's tackled about 25 oh, metres out on the goal you. line. 20 oh, metres into the eastern oh, touch line. Oh, Great opportunity for Penrith to extend the lead as the ball is fed through the hands. Oh, it's a little short pass. Pua tried to ball play there, and he tried to get a pass away to Ellis, and the idea was right. The execution was, well, best way to say, disastrous. Manly come up with a loose ball, and they've got it 30 metres out in their own goal line. Yeah, it was a poor pass, wasn't it? It was behind the play. It was a two of a pass. It was a poor pass from Pua, but it was Ellis who tried to take it, it was behind him, he almost got hold of it, but he was, as he got the ball, the defensive line came to him, it was almost impossible for him to take it, yeah. they've just butchered an opportunity there, the Panthers Raman goes back to the right, he's taken by his opposite over there, Felino. they'll play the ball near the halfway, and they skirt down the short side again, and quickly they put the ball through the hands, and Thomas is screaming down the right wing, he comes at Naden, gets oh. it back on the inside to Trebojevic, and Trebojevic races no. away and scores a four, he put a foot no, on the touch line I'll tell you what, I'm wondering whether they might... Well, I don't know if they can question this, but the linesman's there. Put the flag up. It's a big call from the linesman. He's got it right. He's got it right. I think he got it right. The ball back on the inside to Trebojevic, who provided the ball originally, was going to be a try. But unfortunately for Manly, the winger there, Mitch Thomas, put his right boot on the line and only just... Linesman got it absolutely right, but once again, it was Tr Trebojevic. Everything revolves around him, and the Panthers don't have an answer for him. He could single-handedly win this game for Manly. Well, that was a that was a lovely bit of play down that right side. The last they decided to go the, the blind side on the last plays. We go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star Sydney Chris Warren. It was wonderful play down that skinny side over there, and you just knew that Trebojevic wouldn't be too far from the action, uh, making that break offloading and, and then almost uh, going in to score, which would have levelled things up. 16-12, we've had almost 10 minutes of second-half action, and I've got to be honest with you, if I'm, a, if I'm talking body language, this Manly team looked to be right up for this. They certainly will be playing the better football at the moment, aren't they? And they're not likely at the moment, and there we see Jennings, who's just had a bit of a dart. He's, he's slowly up to his feet. I'm with... Uh, Piggy here. I like this back row for Penrith. Corey, Harawira, Naira. Well, both of them play well. The other kid goes all right too. James Fisher, big, long, striding fella. They're both, the, they're both good players. Anyway, here's Luke out of dummy half and Luke offers it up and Tui Gamala. Tui Gamala's gone straight through. He's over the halfway. Great tackle from behind. Brings him down. 35 metres out. They go back to the left side. It comes away then. Luai. Luai keeps it alive. Jennings. Jennings throws a dummy. Jennings tries to keep it alive and it finishes in the front row of the grandstand on the eastern side of the field. Yeah, a bit off too. A little bit too much there, uh, Michael. Not Michael Jennings, Robert Jennings. He just, I think he should have had a cracking, given the ball on the outside to his winger. They had a well, four on Jennings. three. Jennings is back here injured. I was trying to work out who it was in the left centre because. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just trying it to work out who it was. No, it might have been Naden that came in, was it? Anyway, someone's come into the line over there and threw the ball. I just automatically, just the way he started running and tried to get on the outside of his man. But Jennings is back over here, and I think this is bad news for Penrith. I think he's coming off due to an ankle injury. He's gone back down. He tried to get up walk off the field but he only walked about two spots now he's trying to get up again here and walk off no he's going to be able to get off the two two officials there will help him off the field but uh he's not in a good way is he wasn't it a leg injury he had leading into the semi yeah. he's only been back a couple of weeks i think so harold Weirer will probably go to the centers i would suspect which is where he was playing when jennings was injured 
Well, the Ol Oliver Clark's coming on to replace him, so there's a front rower going on, as you said, to replace a centre. So that's bad news for the Panthers and a real, Actually, a real way. blow for them because he had a fantastic first half, half Jenny. Well, and Harawira has automatically moved to the right centre. I noticed Daryl, so uh, they, and they, they've got uh, their forwards back now taking the ball up as Parker. Anyway, Manly worked the ball ahead, and gee, I tell you what, Parker was held and then Coach allowed to get out of the tackle and wriggled himself another 15 metres downfield. He's going to play. No, there's a more injury. It might be Parker here. I think the Manly player's injured. So is the Penrith player here, both of them are down at the moment. Well, Parker's OK. It's the Penrith player is down injured. He's done the left ankle. I'm just trying to work out to get uh, a might, good look at it here. Might, I'm just trying to see. It might be the back row here, Fisher-Harris. I don't think it's, it it's Fisher-Harris. Okay. Is it Izzard? Yeah, it's Izzard. It's Izzard who's down injured. Yeah, it looks, that looks awful too. The slow-mo there shows him being pushed backwards and twisting that left ankle here. And you're right, it is Izzard. Jeez, I tell you what, if they lose Izzard and, and uh, Jennings in the space of 30 seconds, I'll be in a bit of trouble. But, and let's go down the sideline courtesy of the Star Sydney. And Chris Warren, losing two players on this rotation on a very hot day could be, well, it could really be with 30 minutes to go, the real turning point of the game. Well, absolutely. I mean, I thought the game was almost starting to turn a bit in Manly's favour. I mentioned that body language earlier on. They look to be right up for this. Nothing to lose. Rank outsiders. Uh, the other thing, too, is this, uh, this Penrith team, to me, they look a, a much bigger team than Manly. And uh, given the, the, the oppressive conditions out there, that's going to play in Manly's advantage. And particularly, as you say, Dave, if they do lose a couple of players to injury, well, it looks like they've already definitely lost one, so they, they're down to 16. But uh, that will count against them, no doubt. And the thing is, he's, he's, he's back on the line, he's hard, but he doesn't look well. 14, 14. He's very ginger as Knight goes to the line and gets a pass away and you wouldn't believe it. They've made a mistake, Manly. When they seem to have an advantage, they've lost the ball and Dylan hey, Edwards go, comes up with it and Penrith go on the attack. Play They're 12 on. metres out. They go back the left side. Here comes this big fella, James Fisher-Harris, and he strides towards the line. He's 11 metres out. Penrith back on the attack. They lead 16-12 on the low scoreboard. Penalty to Penrith right in front. Well, he gave them every opportunity there. I mean, really, the referee gave Manly every opportunity. Penrith are going to take the tap here. I want to see the half, the uh, hooker run, run a bit more. Sonny Luke, every time he's run, he's been dangerous. I think he needs to do a little bit more from dummy half, the hooker. Ellis goes straight and hard. They take the tap, and they're going to play the ball underneath the goalpost. That's the second time they've denied themselves a penalty. It's opportunity. It comes to Harawira on the right. He gets away from one. He's still going, Harawira. Harawira got out of two. Harawira has another go. He dives can't get there, he's held up a metre out from the goal line, Luke's in it, dummy half he looks at the referee and says, gee what have I got to do, we'll win a penalty, ball comes away now, taking it up as Luai Luai gets out of one, Luai runs back Luai decides to straighten up, Luai gets out of two, he offers a ball up then to Igamala, he throws a lovely ball to the centre and out on the far side Maliko Felino races away to score another Penrith try gee the big fella did wonderfully well didn't he yeah, I think it was two to a mile, it wasn't yeah. it? I mean, he got the ball there. He just stopped. He had a look where the defence was. Threw a beautiful cutout ball on the outside to Felino, and he did the rest. But it was the, the dancing feet there of Luai, I think it was, in the middle of the ruck that caused the problems originally. Good work there from the Panthers. That was a nice set from them there. But they started doing a, putting a little bit of footwork on the Manly Seagulls, and it's paid off for them. They've now scored a try. It's 20 points to 12. Kick to come. He's all smiles for Lino. Showed a bit of pace there. He had a man on his outside. He could have used if he wanted to. Didn't need him. And just planted it down about two metres in from touch. And, uh, and uh, going down to the sideline, courtesy of the star, Sydney, Chris Warren, all came on the back of that Manly knock on. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, they've scored the four tries and they've all been camped on Manly's line. That's where they've come from, so the game plan, pretty simple for Penrith. Just get yourself down the other end and you know the points are going to come, but in the middle parts of the field, Manly certainly have held their own, but their goal line defence is just uh, unable to, to hold these uh, Penrith boys out. Yeah, well, the knock-on. It was a simple knock-on, too, wasn't it? It was yep. a pressure knock-on, was it? It was just a pass through the back, through the, the hands to try and get yep. the ball to the left side of the field. And it, yeah, well, anyway. They had numbers, David, too. They did have some numbers there, the Manly side. But as Chris said, their goal-line defence is pretty poor. If I'm a Penrith, you know, if I'm, if I'm the coach, Cameron Sorrell, I'm just telling them, look, boys, just put your head down, bum up, and take the line on. There's points to be scored here. Great, Great kick from the sideline. Great Dylan Edwards, low, straight. But more importantly, Daryl, mm. straight over the black dot, two points 
Very important. So just, well, they didn't take the kick at goal. I heard someone oh, no. in the background saying, kick at goal, take the two. That was Piggy, I think. I think it was, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> 22 to 12, the scoreline on the low scoreboard, courtesy of uh, Penrith over Manly. And we're just watching a replay of that, courtesy, of course, of uh, Coach Hire. And uh, what a good bit of football from the big fella. Thompson Tuigamala. Gee, he did well. He drew his man, threw the lovely ball, and gave Felino an uninterrupted passage to the line. I'll tell you what, I reckon it's Moses Leota, who's a talented player. He'd be itching to get back out there. I just, you, just, you know, I know this is changing by the minute, but he just, Penrith are starting to mind to run with a bit of more intent here, and that, to me, spells trouble here for Manly. Well, I think the, uh, well, 26 minutes to go on a hot day, I think the, the coach is probably going to hold his firepower back for a while, won't, don't you think? Give these blokes as much time as they can while they're not wilting. He's going to uh, leave him for as long as possible. Ball goes back to the left. It comes away Outside. now to Luai. And Luai puts a kick in now, Good but sits kick. up. Uh, it won't go dead, I don't think. Fraboyevich gathers it up. And look at the kick chase. One, two, three, four, five, six oh, oh, Penrith oh, oh, players oh, oh, down oh, oh, there oh, to surround oh, Fraboyevich. Oh, oh, and that's enthusiasm. I tell you what, the kick was good, but a kick uh, like that's only as good as the okay, chase well, and the enthusiasm. Oh, 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 A+. plus. Well, this is crunch time here for the Panthers. They're in front by 10 points. I think they realise here, they put a bit of a defensive set here on Manly. They might make a mistake. Stake. They might not get out of their own 30. This is where they can wrap this premiership up here in this grand final day. That's tackle four. They're only just outside the 20. You can throw a blanket over Manly, though, that bunch. And here's Pratt, the dummy half, trying to find some metres as he works it back to within 15 of the halfway. Last play comes away to Pearsall. Pearsall puts a kick in. I tell you what, it's a great kick. This might even be a 40-20. I'll tell you what, I'll have to have a look. I was he behind the 40? I think it is. He's found touch five metres out from the goal line at Penrith's end of the field. And what an Amazing oh, kick. What did I say a moment ago? How a good kick can complete a, a very poor set. There's another example of it. That's got to be 10 in the bin. That has to be 10 in the bin. May, and the ball was fly coming back in for Manly to take the tap kick as a result of the 40-20. We're going to a penalty up here. Tyrone May has run back and knocked the ball as a pe Manly player threw it to another. Blowing a penalty. He's penalty? not going to put him in the bin. He's just it's still reasonable time anyway. We weren't set. So it's a penalty. So it's a penalty. You know what? I think that rule sucks. I reckon you kick for touch and you do 40-20. Yeah. It should be the way it was 12 months ago where you get up there and you take it as soon as you're ready to go. If they're offside, penalise them. But that's a real disadvantage for Manly now. Well, I, yeah, I think it's a disadvantage, but I tell you what, I reckon May is very lucky not to be in the sin bin for a professional foul. Uh, anyway, Manly have got the opportunity though, to hit back though on the result of the incredible 40-20 from Pearsall. Bring it up as Garner. He's already scored a try and he's going to be playing it about uh, eight or nine metres out on the goal line. He'll play the ball now. He goes to Pratt and Pratt holds the ball up. It goes to Pearsall. He throws a dummy. He comes back the open side. Tell you what, if Manly happened to win this, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this fella Pearsall gets the Jack, uh, Jack Gibson medal as they go back to the right and the ball comes away to Hines and Hines is tackled about five metres out from the goal line. Go. Ten in from touch. Ball comes across again to Pearsall. Pearsall offers it up to Garner. Garner tries to find a patch. He's down Stay the centre of the Penrith defence. He can't. Man. Last tackle Hold coming up for Manly. Go. They seem to have lost their way in this set. Little kick into the oh, end go. goal area. Nathan Don't does wonderfully well. Work. The ball rebounds off the goal post. He had the wherewithal to adjust his body and his hands to take the ball and avoid conceding the line drop out and avoid the uh, ball going out of his hands and conceding a try. Yeah, he did brilliantly there, didn't he? You're right. They did, they did nothing in that set of six. Manly, the kick in the end was a dangerous That's one, though. Manly. As you said, I don't know whether it was Travers who may have put it in there, but it was beautifully fielded by Naden. Saved points there for the Panthers. He just reeled it in one hand and somehow managed to get back into the field of play. It was a brilliant individual effort from him. Now Penrith working their way down the centre of the park. They've got some problems at the moment, Penrith. There's another player down injured. A long kick from Luai. It's not a bad kick. The quick chase isn't quite as good this time but there's still plenty of them down there and I tell you what Luke's the first I'm man and bringing the ball back was the right winger and uh, the right winger in the form of Mitch Thomas was immediately cleaned up by the hooker and uh, Manly have got the ball 15-25 out to their own goal line. Well both kickers have got big boots on them haven't they? Oh knock on from Manly. Oh, that's a coach killer I mean. Moses Novaio McGrill trying too hard. Well now he's knocked the ball on he's only 24 metres out from his own line here 
This is where Penrith seriously need to put the foot down here. This is where they can win this game for themselves. I know there's still 22 minutes to go. I think if they score a converted try here and get to 28-12 in front, they're going to be awfully difficult to beat. And here's a great opportunity for them because the Manly players then were really struggling to get it back on side. I was just about to say... Both kickers have done extremely well. Pearsall's kick was tremendous, but so was the kick from uh, from Luau, I think it is, the halfback. Yeah. He's got a strange style. He gets the ball, he holds it up, seems to take all day, and then he bangs it. But that was a beautiful kick, made about 50 metres. Here's the opportunity for the Panthers here now. Tui Gamala takes it ahead, and Tui Gamala's plat tackle about 15 metres out on the goalpost. Southern end of the field on the low scoreboard. Panthers lead 22-12, midway through the second half. It comes to Harawira. Harawira's playing at the right centre because Jennings has gone off injured. He offers it up to the goal kicker and the right winger, Diller Edwards. He's Tackle 10 metres out in the goal line. 15 in from touch. They go back to the centre of the park. And here's this big fella, Fisher. He offers it up to Clark. He keeps it alive in the centre of the field. It comes back to Luke. Luke keeps it alive. Back to the left side of the field. Luai. Luai gets it away to Izzard. Izzard for the line. Oh, Izzard could have thrown the ball. But we don't know what might have happened. Looked as if they had the advantage over there. Didn't get it away. To the... Oh, Felino goes from dummy half. Then he keeps it alive. It comes to Tui Gamala. Tui Gamala goes straight and hard. Gets out of one. Gets out of two. The big fella reaches out. No, he's not there. He's short of the line, as you heard the referee say. So now Luke from Dummy Half comes to May. May gets it up. Fisher gets it away. Back it goes to May. May goes one way, goes back the other. Does a pirouette, keeps it alive with the ball that trundles along the ground. Comes to Luai. Luai goes one way, thinks he's playing touch football. He gets away from one. Luai will go straight through. Luai scores the try. And that might be enough for Penrith to win the grand final. Just brilliant individual skills. Thought he was playing touch football at the ground next to, well, out there at Penrith. I think they've got a try here. here Just have to have a look at the uh, at perhaps an obstruction. We'll go to the coach hire video referee for the first time for a try to be adjudicated in this game. But Luai looks to have scored a try that will probably, well, not to definitely put the uh, the final nail in the coffin, Daryl, but shit will go a long way to doing it. Well, it came out of nothing. I mean, they were just mucking around there. The Panthers, they, were, they had the ball. No one was running. No one was taking the line on. Eventually, the ball ended up somehow with Luau. Now, he got the ball. He sort of went to his left. He went to his right. I mean, they're checking whether a ball came off, I think, a Penrith player into a Manly player. I think it was just knocked out by a Manly player. Eventually, it went to the 5-8, who just went to his right, then to the left, May, threw it to Luau. He went to the line, pirouetted, turned around, thought he was one of the three Stooges, went back. You know, he looks like Sean Johnson, yeah. he looks like. Very similar. For mine, there's no obstruction. It was an in and away. Get on the outside of one of the many defenders. Inside another one. A brilliant individual try. For mine, that's a try. Well, let's go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star sitting at the Ultimate Sports Viewing Destination. What's your view on this, Chris Warren? Well, it's the same old thing, isn't it? Uh, that's, uh, they're, you know, they're a wonderful team, this Manly side, no doubt about it. They can certainly attack, but on their own goal line, they're, they, they're just too, too thin, you know. They were giving them an eternity there, and uh, it didn't take too long for Jerome Luai just to take the advantage. There, was, there were holes everywhere. They wouldn't put the man down with the ball, and... Uh, well, it's going to come up. It's going to be a try, I'm sure, once it once it is given. But they're still looking up at this big screen. Coach time video referees Steve Chitty and Henry Perinara. Good luck. Well, gee, it looked a try. What are they saying here? Coach Tyre, the video referees say it's a try. Looked a try. Smelt like a try. And uh, for the last five minutes while we've been looking at it, no one can see why it couldn't be a try. And the referee Lally. awarded it a try. So Luai scores 26-12. Kick to come. And surely with the kick to come to... Uh, Oh, let's see what's let's happening. Just see what he's saying. That's been reviewed. Uh, bring Liam out. Bring Liam out, please. Liam must have given him a gobful, I would say. We're talking about Liam Knight here. Mate, both teams are competing, and there's balls like that. Like that, that you can't run behind a player. Mate, it's been reviewed. I'm not worried about that. His mouth is worrying what, yeah. what I'm worried about, OK? Make sure no more from him. You know what amazes me? When they tell the captain to tell a bloke to shut up, why doesn't he tell the bloke himself to shut up? As if the, what do you think the captain's going to do? You ever seen a captain go up to him and say, mate, don't swear anything? <laughs> you ever seen one say anything to him? No. Well, I can only think that Riley Travers is off the field, too. I just looked down there then. I'm not sure whether Chris can verify that because I can only see three on the Manly bench now. And the Pearsall came out, led them out in the second half. Was acting captain? No, he's out there. Number seven's out there. I can see uh, Travers is oh, out he's there. At the I, just, I just saw Pearsall going out there. Well, maybe he's acting captain and 
Riley and Travers isn't, but Travers was the original captain in the side. Anyway, here's the the uh, the kicker, Dylan Edwards. Almost on the scrum line, the opportunity to extend this Penrith leader on the low scoreboard. It's 28 points to 12, 19 minutes to go in the game, 16 points the margin. And it's just becoming, well, they need three converted tries, don't they, Manly? Well, you know what, Dave, I've seen, I think I've seen the last two under-20s grand finals. Now, two years ago, it was Penrith, I think, up against the Warriors. The Warriors, and the Warriors came home with a wet sail and that, and, and got very close to Penrith. Time and up. last year, it was a similar situation where the Warriors led the Broncos by a big margin, and the Broncos very nearly got them. Yeah, in they the did, end. didn't they? Very nearly got them. So, you know, if you're a Manly supporter... Don't rise. give up in saying that I'd still like to be on the Panthers. Oh. Well, the Panthers, of course, they've lost Robert Jennings and they've got the 15 and the 16 and the 17 on their bench now, Daryl. So they've got their, basically, with the, with the exception of Jennings, they've got their number one gun 13 out there at the moment, I would suspect, as the ball again goes to the left side of the field and Penrith work it back to within 12 of the halfway line and here's Luai. Luai, he's had a big impact in this second half. He was very much involved in the Polino try and now he scored one himself. He plays the ball to Luke and Luke offers it up to Izzard. Izzard, who had that ankle, ankle injury, seems to be going OK at the moment as he works it back to the halfway. They'll go back to the oh, right side. It comes away to May. May looks up. He puts a kick in. He tries to find the ground between the winger and the fullback, and he does a good job as Bogle has hardly seen any action in this game. They've really oh! cut and shut down this manly left side. We haven't seen Dimitriou, uh, Trebojevic and Bogle put together anything, and yet that was the combination that at times last week destroyed North Queensland. They're talking of Dimitriou. He gets the ball and runs it back to his own 30. They go back to the right side again, and Rahman brings it ahead now for the manly. He's the right centre for the Seagulls. He'll play the ball oh, 17 and a half go. minutes to go in this game. Oh, Penrith lead 28 points to 12 oh, on the low scoreboard. 15 in from touch. They'll come back the open side. And again, they're trying to find a little passage down the centre of the ruck. There's none there. They're going to play the ball on the halfway line. Manly with the ball. They've got the job in front of them. Travis has the ball. The ball comes away to the, the right side of the field and Bainbridge goes for a gallop. Good strong run from him. He's tackled 35 metres out. Last play. Pratt. Pratt gets it away. Hind. Little grubber kick and get Getting back there, Harawira falls on the loose ball and, and comes up with the ball. In fact, re re referee says play on as he kept it alive to Naden. He'll play it 25 out from his own post. Yeah, he, he looks a decent player, doesn't he, Harawira? I, I like the look of him. He's a big range. He, he's a back rower. He's currently playing in the centres. He, he's got that ability to break tackles and offload. Most of these Panthers players have got that ability. Here's the number set, the set to try scorer, Felino, running with a great deal of purpose as well. Danger, sign, danger time here for the Manly Seals. They need to defend here as the Panthers start spreading it and popping balls out their backsides here. Oh, and a one-on-one -on -one strip here as Garner's got the ball. And I think it was Luai who took he took the halfback on and stripped him one-on-one -on -one legally. And that might just turn the tide for a fraction Manly's way as Manly work it down the centre of the field and they tackle 42 metres out from Penrith's line as Pratt gets it away to Travers. Travers holds it up. It comes away from Heinz, Trebojevic, Dimitriou. Dimitriou runs into Harawira and also the winger on this side of the field, Dylan Edwards. He'll play the ball about 32 metres out the western side. Ball played to Trebojevic. He gets it on to Bainbridge. Bainbridge, the second row for Manly, is tackled. 23, 24 metres out from Penrith. Goalpost plays it. That goes back to Pratt. They come back. The left side. Oh, the, the ball is knocked on by Nicholas Hines. He had a hand on it, and he just had a little bow peep to see where the, where the defence was. He was thinking about what he was going to do with the ball and forgot to catch it to start with. The pass was in front of him, but... Yeah. Wasn't a great ball. You know what? I think Nico Hines and the problem was he was thinking he was gonna where he was gonna direct the ball once he got it, but the ball from the from the hooker you Pratt was in front of him as if he wanted him to run onto the ball. Yeah. I think Nico Hines was in a process of trying to in his brain work out where when he got the ball what he was gonna do with it. But Nico Pratt threw the ball as if he was going to run onto it and steam onto it and hit the line. Uh, just a little bit of miscommunication there from the Manly Seagulls. They can ill afford that. 15 minutes to go in the game. They've got to be absolutely perfect for the last 15 minutes if they're going to get their way back into this. Now it goes back to the left side and your man's back out there. Here he is, Moses Liuta. And he's tackled 25 okay, metres out in the goalpost. Tackled a second time, too. Might have even been tackled a third time as uh, the ball comes back to the left side. And Felino, he got the ball off the halfback. Luan, he runs it back to within 12 and a half way line. 15 in from touch. Eastern side of the field as they come to the centre of the field of the Panthers. And Izzard, he got past one defender. And, uh, and he's going to play it nine short of halfway. They uh, sent the ball to the right. Taking it up as Kate Ellis. Release Ellis is tackled just over the halfway. Penrith just playing steady football at the moment. They're in front. 
front and front comfortably on the scoreboard. 28 points to 12. Scoreboard courtesy of Lowe's. 14 minutes to go in the game. 42 metres out from the goal line. Last play. Is that I think finally succumbed to that ankle injury. Up goes a kick from May. It's going to come down. About to, It's going to come down to no man's land and Harawira gets it. He sends it back to May. May puts up the kick but the referee's real. Harawira was offside. Yeah, I'm not sure Harawira was offside. I think it was one of his other players. I think it was Pua who went up there. I mean he just lumbered up in the middle of the ruck. He was a metre in front of the kick and then got within about a metre of where the ball landed. It was poor play from him there. Opportunity there for the Panthers but Pua got in the way. Boys, just jumping in for a moment, the team news is through for the state championship final. Newcastle, one change to the bench. Tama Kupu in 27 comes into the team at the expense of Josh King. Ipswich to start as per the program. Newcastle and Ipswich following the Holton Cup grand final. Was that a few red herrings we got? Didn't we get news that Ipswich were going to make about wholesale changes to their team? It came from Mark Braybrook. Just so. <laughs> Now they exclusively you reveal that so so he won't play, he won't play, and he won't play, they're all playing. Well, Ducks and Drake's being played by Ipswich because Mark would have rung them and asked them course, no doubt. Breaking he, news, he's now tipping oh, Ipswich, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> ball played to Pratt, and Pratt comes to the left side. Trebovich. Oh, cut out pass that's knocked down by the Penrith winger. He knocked it down, Edwards, and then it flew and went high in the air, and Manly have got it back in the back part. I think Trebovich has caught one. I think he's hurt. Referee's gonna give a penalty to Manly here. Started to boil over. Yeah, and a bit of push and shove here at the moment. Travojevic is down. He, he must have copped one. I, I reckon the pass from Travojevic was going forward. I think they should have ruled on that first of all. There was a Panther hand went in there. Tapped the ball forward. They regained it here, Manly. But Travojevic is down at the moment and doesn't look well at all. Let's have a look what happened James, to him. James. Oh, he was hitting the shoulder ribs. charge? Yeah, he was hitting the ribs. I think it was the winger who may have got him there, Dylan Edwards. Dylan Edwards is the one that tapped the down. Now, is it a shoulder charge? Coach Hire video reps are having a look to see whether there's a shoulder charge. Is it Leota? It's just silly. I'm just, yes. I don't know who it was. Could have been well, they've Fisher already given Harris. the penalty. Yeah. And unless they put him on, well, if they put him on report, he's not going to worry about it. Well, they're not going to give him 10 in the bin. The only possibility of foul play would be if it was a shoulder charge. Get him right in the ribs just after he passed the ball. As he's, he's not well, but I'm pretty sure he'll play on. If he, if he goes off, the, their chances of winning, I'd say, would be zilch, and that means none. Well, you got a tap or kick. Well, yeah, they're behind 28-12. What do you think they're going to do? James, James. <laughs> Don't be head, so cranky. Go ahead. Well, I understand. You know, without being rude, he he's talking about well. whether he's going to kick for touch and uh, not kick for uh, for kick for goal. <laughs> so, Easy here. No. I'll have a go at myself no there. It did sound funny, Why didn't it? A bit of push and shove going on here with Demetrio at the moment. I think he's got a bit of a mouth on him. Ball has taken a head and here's Big Knight. And he no, charges the hill. Yeah. Liam Knight. He's going to be playing it close to the goal line. They come back the left side to Manly. Manly taking a head through Hines. Hines tried to keep it alive. The ball's gone loose. It's been picked up by Manly. I thought it touched the Penrith player's boot. But the referee's going to rule not play that. Garner, he's already scored one try. He's close to scoring another. It comes to the uh, Pratt. Pratt gets it away. Hines. Draboyevich, away it goes, Dimitriou Dimitriou tries to roll over the top of them, but this time the steamroller has stopped short, he plays the ball it comes from Bogle, Draboyevich, on it goes to Pearsall, Pearsall gets it away Hines puts a little grab again, and he'll win the race for the ball, no he oh. won't, no he won't well he won the race, but the coming from nowhere is Luai and Luai I think has hit Hines's hand, and Hines's hand accidentally it may have been has knocked it dead, and now Penrith take the quick tap, and they've got 17 Tackle oh, yeah, starting yeah, at the 20-metre yeah, yeah. line. They'll play at nine short of halfway. Well, I'm amazed by that ruling. I would have thought yeah, that came yeah, off right. Blue Eye then. I thought he tried to knock the ball dead. And the ball did go straight over the dead ball line. Hines, for all in, you know, intents and purposes, yeah, he had an opportunity there of just grabbing and putting it down for a try. But, gee, I think that's a tough ruling from the referee. Well, I'm like you, Daryl, but I'm Two, certain right. they've still got a challenge up their sleeve. So if they thought that, why why didn't they go uh, do, go with that penalty right. against Manly for holding down 40 metres out from Manly's line? I'm not sure what Chris Warren thought down on the sideline courtesy of the star, but I'm certain they've still got a challenge left. Why wouldn't you have taken it there if there was doubt? Yeah, I agree with you guys. I certainly was down. I was waiting for the dropout, and here we are now. A penalty downfield to, to Penrith, and uh, they've just kicked that over the uh, eastern touchline. They'll take this tab about 25 metres out. Another try here will certainly nail it. Absolutely, well, either they have to take the. I thought they might have even had a crack at goal there, Penrith, just to wind the clock down a bit, but might have been a bit too far out. But they score a try here, it's all over. Here's big. 
front row. Oh, I, I love this bloke, Leota. He just goes forward all the time. Ball comes away. He looks a bit like Sam Mowat, doesn't he? He's, he's not tall, but he's got a lot of strength. Ball comes to Naden. Naden takes it ahead, and he's tackled a few metres out on the goal line. Ten in from touch. He'll play the ball to May. May offers it up. It comes away through the hands it comes. It goes away to Luke. Luke started the scoring. He thought about putting a one-armer away to May. He's tackled about nine metres out on the goal line. He's on the western scrum line. He plays it to May. May offers it up. Taking it up is Fisher. This is Fisher Harris. He's tackled about five metres out on the goal line. Underneath the goal post. Southern end of the field. Penrith in front. 28-12. Inside the last ten minutes. Little grubber kick comes off a manly player. And then does just went straight across field. It's fallen on by another manly player. And then it's stripped by Penrith. So penalty to manly. I just thought for a moment that maybe the second referee had said the manly player who fell on it after it touched the it's first offside. one was offside. Yeah. yeah, it would have been touch and go, but they, they get the penalty here, Manly. They now find touch. There's only nine, a bit over nine over nine minutes oh, to yeah. go in the game. They're down by 28 points oh. to 12. They must okay. score in this set. Taking it up as Hines, and Hines runs to the line. He's tried his insides out. This kid's yes, been good. He's been out there, hasn't he? He's been good, hasn't he? He's put grubber kicks in. He, I'm, I'm, I thought he was a bit stiff not to score down the other end earlier. Uh, when he knocked the ball on at one stage, it was basically Together, because... Guys. He's not sure what position he's playing, but he looks like he's a back row or... Half-back, 5'8". He's got a bit of talent. He's got to, he's an all-round player. Trebojevic throws a long pass over the top. It goes to Bogle. Bogle runs out a bit of room. Come back on the inside. Taken by Harawira. They're on the halfway. Dimitriou. Dimitriou offers it up to Bainbridge. And Bainbridge Wait goes on. straight and hard. He's still going. He's not effectively held. Gets up and has another crack. He's tackled about 38 metres out from Penrith's line. He's on the scrum line. Western side of the field. As Pratt goes back the open side. It comes to Hines. Hines short ball to Knight. Knight charging downfield. He doesn't need the support of Trebojevic. Boyevich, he races away and scores a manly try right next to the right uprights. 28 16, kick the come. Geez, he showed some footwork there, didn't he? Knight, Liam Knight, a big front rower. Beautiful ball, as you said. Again, we were just wrapping him. Nico Hides got the ball. He went to the line, threw a short ball on the outside to Liam Knight, who showed a su surprising amount of speed. And then he put a bit of footwork on the fullback. I don't think he got a hand on him, just in and away. There's a winger coming in. He just wrong-footed an easy, scored next to the post. There's still a flicker of hope here for the Seagulls. There's still just under eight minutes to go. It's going to be 28 points to 18. There's uh, the hooker, Hugh Pratt. The shot at goal, 12 metres out. 22 metres in, there's the kick from Pratt, and it's successful. It's 28-18, seven and a half left on the clock as we go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star, Sydney. Here's Chris Warren. He's an athlete, isn't he, Liam Knight? And uh, you can't help but think that him and Jake Trebojevic will probably be the, the starting front row, as you'd expect, uh, for the Manly Club in, in years to come. But uh, a real gifted athlete. The man in front of me, um, not talking athleticism, he's got a more of a choppy, close body double, uh, Addison Dimitriou. He's their leading try scorer this year. He really needs to get more involved with just seven minutes left on the clock. I'd, I'd say George Rose. <laughs> Don't you think? You're with me? Moves that's a bit quicker than George. It looks a bit like him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As a manly, they've still got a hope here. And I heard, I'm certain I heard that the pig man oh, say about a couple of minutes ago, oh, take the two, oh. no, not the first time, the second time, to make it 30 points to, to at that stage, 30 points to 12, oh, to yes. give them that extra oh, little yeah. bit of a buffer. Oh, well, Dave, we said before, I mean... The grand finals in the under-20s over the last few yeah, years have been littered with sides who have got a lead. But Penrith have got the ball. They've surrendered it here, the Sea Eagles. Geez, they can ill afford that. Well, I think the Penrith player got round the back and knocked it out of his hands quite legally. It was just, it was just a loose carry. It wasn't a strip. It was just knocked. I think he might have knocked the arm carrying the ball, the Penrith defender, and the Manly player, who wasn't holding the ball securely enough, lost it, and it just went along the ground. Leota picked it up, and now Penrith have got it as Leota's down receiving some attention for a cramp. They're 22 metres out on the goalposts, and they're in front, 28 points to 18 on the low scoreboard. Six and a half to go. And... Uh, I think they said that the changes... might go back to Mark Levy for those changes in the upcoming match. I think you said no changes for Ipswich, is that right? Well, no changes, but I've just spoken to Mark Braybrook. He What's thinks happened? he has breaking news. One of the players is downstairs in a moon boot, but they claim that he's playing. 
Now, the official team sheets say they'll be as per the program. For Newcastle, one change to defence, Tama Kupu in 27 into the side, and the expensive Josh King, who drops out of the side. So we'll find out a little more off Potsy a bit later on. Hold here, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they think Tommy's still coaching. <laughs> Tommy's trying to pull a swifty. <laughs> Ball comes back to the left side of the field, and here's Ellis taking it ahead, and he's going to be playing it. About five metres out on the goal line. They're on the attack here, Penrith. They'll put the game definitely to bed if they can score here, as the ball is taken to the line by Pua, and he's tackled underneath the goalpost, northern end of the field. Ball is set one way. No, Luke goes from dummy half as he scored his second. Don't think he has. think he's held up. Yes, says the referee. And uh, they're going back ten metres out. And last tackle, is it? Or one to go? Out there, guys. This is the last tackle. It's the last tackle. He just answered that for you. Thank you. Well, there you are. So I'll we'll ask him and he answered. No, no. You're playing it, Tommy. It's very nice of him. I'm glad he's got well, the head phone switched on. Let's see what they've got the up their sleeve here, the race. Panthers. Last tackle. You would think they've just got to roll one into the end goal last area. Play, Surely play. that's the play. Ball goes back to the left, and they decide that they, Luai decides to run the ball and take the tackle. What the and it's hell? a hand over five metres out from his own goal line. Well, I suppose they think defending 95 metres out is as good as anything. Go. And the, well, you know, the, in the mind, you know, oh. Daryl, probably they, they think with all the exuberance out there, if they try it, oh, now they've dropped Wait the ball on. Manly anyway, so it doesn't matter what they were thinking, because in the end, oh, Manly, on. whatever opportunity they had, yeah. they've literally thrown yeah. away, and here's Harawira, Harawira again, deciding not to throw the ball hey, to a man who was in a better Manly. position. Oh, he's held up, he's going to learn from that one day. He's tackled by three men about a metre out from the goal line. He'll play the ball to Edwards. Edwards will throw the pass back infield and take it up. Here's this Fisher-Harris, and Fisher-Harris has tackled about three or four metres out from the goal line. Manly have probably almost James. conceded defeat Just now. Man. Penrith are going to win this Holden oh Cup competition, Lord, you'd Liam. think, inside the last five minutes. That's it goes to Luai. Luai, Luai throws a dummy, throws another dummy. And he had an overlap. Thank I think you, he had Luis. six on two out there, but he still decided to go on his own. Well, he couldn't find the right bloke and eventually stuffed it up. Now Clark at dummy half. The ball goes back to the left again. It goes to Naden. Naden's away from one, away from two. Loses the ball. Picked up by May. He sends it back to Leota. Leota decides to go straight and hard and then throws an orange's ball out the back line. Someone should tell Pendrith they're in front by ten, not behind by ten, as they get it away to Felino. Felino runs across mill. They're playing touch football. Comes to Clark. Clark hasn't scored yet. He's had tackled about five metres out on the goal line. Pendrith on the attack. He'll get to his feet slowly here. He's going to play the ball to Luke and Luke offers it up and they take the ball to Pua and Pua goes hard for the line he's tackled the he's net, not Jason. far away, away he's net. right underneath the goal line right underneath the goal post I should say he'll play it to Luke and Luke goes back the left side again it goes to Luai Luai cut out ball to Felino. Felino gets it away and going for the line and going in to score the try is it Nisi and Nisi scores the try that finalises this game in favour of Penrith and on the low scoreboard it's 32-18 kick to come and Penrith are the Holden Cup champions this year, even though there's still three and a half left on the clock I think you'd want to be on the Panthers oh, here. Congratulations to them, but seriously, I mean, Manly Seagulls have been their own worst enemy in the last five minutes they haven't had great opportunities to score but they've had opportunities to hold the ball and they've dropped it on about the second tackle the last two times they've had it, had it when they, and just not from trying to spread the ball, just from someone taking it up and putting it down, you can't do that they were chasing, chasing, chasing all the game here today. They were never in front, the Manly Seagulls, but you always had the impression they played smart enough football. They they could possibly get the Panthers. They were a bit vulnerable, didn't they? And Panthers are going to win this quite easily. Normal and I think it is probably a little bit deceptive. I don't think the Panthers have been all that great. As I'm looking on the sideline now, now Jake Ennis is about to come on here. There's a wry smile on his face. I reckon that's his first involvement. There's two minutes 50 to go in the game. Yeah, I haven't seen him out there, and, uh, but by the size of him, he plays... Uh, he doesn't look very big, does he? He's a fullback. He looks like a fullback to me. <laughs> but you have a look at him. Well, you're not going to replace Naden with him, are you, during the yeah. game? And the way that uh, the hooker's gone and Luai's gone, uh, he's, uh, he looks as if he's still eligible for under 10s. Oh, I don't he? think he's... That, I think he's older than that. <laughs> have a look at the size of him. Mm. He'd be the smallest bloke out there. Anyway, plus his name's Jake. There's a lot of Jakes under 10. Here comes the kick from wide out. And uh, Dylan Edwards from wide out puts it high in the direction of the post and he converts the Anisi try. And it's 34-18, two minutes to go in the Holden Cup as we go down to the sideline, courtesy of the star Sydney, Chris Warren. Yeah, they've been a class above Manly, haven't they? And full credit to the Seagulls. They've fought right to the death, but they're out on their feet, these youngsters from Brookvale. 
and uh, Penrith, well, they keep churning Only out youngsters, one. don't they? That's a uh, conveyor belt of talent still uh, ticking over and alive and well at the foot of the mountain. So uh, not long to go now, but uh, 34 fourth. points to 18, you'd think, will be the full-time score. Faimanu Anisi, he's played really well, that left winger, and uh, he's been given an early shower. And uh, what's happened over here is that they've kicked it out on the full. And what's... Kids. And Bobby, they're reviewing kids. it. Yeah, they're reviewing whether it went out on the full. I've got yeah, to they're say, challenging that it wasn't out. On the full. I've got to say, the linesman was less than enthusiastic, and I don't think he was overly confident when he made the decision. Well, Trebojevic was following it through, and he had a look at it, and he said straight away to the winger Dylan Edwards, "That hasn't gone out on the full," and uh, immediately said it. I tell you oh, what, he's, he's right. right too. <laughs> it's he's bounced right. inside the touchline. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> but it hasn't bounced. It hasn't bounced a centimetre in. It's bounced about a ten centimetres in. Yep. Well, don't embarrass the touch judge. Over turn, guys. That was Manly touch judge Laurie McConnell, by the way. Time's off, guys. Time <laughs> off. Well, I hope it is for your sake. Well, it's either him or Anthony <laughs> Elliott, but he, he looks like a Laurie McDonald. What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> look, have a look at him. If that's not a Laurie McDonald, Boys, sort it out. In. I'm your <laughs> auntie. Nice what are you doing? Right, not only here. Oh, dear. One and a half minutes to go. And uh, the ball comes back to the centre of the park, and Trebojevic tries to make some ground. Got to give Manly kids something. They, they try to short oh. kick off. Trailing, trailing by 16 points and uh, you know, they, they could have easily just said oh let's kick James it down James the other end just, James, that's a football against each day oh yeah James. but it's you just want to score whenever you can end yeah, of the end of the season you just uh, James, you can easily give it up now penalty against Penrith for being offside up, guys. We've got a late hit by number 11 Penrith late hit by number 11, there's two manly players down there. The halfback Fisher Harris yeah, at the moment. Wait. What's he got him both? Yeah. Riley Travers, wait. he's down at the moment, so I'm not sure what Penrith, the Penrith story here. is. There's two manly Penrith. players down at the moment. Yeah, it was when number 11. Him, one of them was Pratt. Yeah, number 11 was one that hit him. Now, here's Hines. Hines decides to have a crack on his own and he's tackled. Hey, About eight metres out from the goal line inside the, the last line. 50 Hold. seconds. Go Penrith play. have got the game well and truly wrapped up. Liam Knight, gee, what a try he scored. We certainly saw something about him, and as Chris had pointed out before the game, talking about his skills, we know we're going to see a bit of him in the future. Well, we think we will. As the ball is fed out wide. Oh, it was a pass there. Well, I'll tell you what, the pass from Pearson was a beauty. Parker hit the hole. He caught it, and I think you'll find when he didn't control it initially, it has hit a Penrith player. Then he's caught it again, and, of course, that constitutes a knock-on. Yeah, they're going to question this. Manny challenge. He's caught it again to score the try, but the original call... Yeah, the and I'm a bit like you. I'm not sure it's hit the Penrith player. Yeah, he's called it to the Penrith player. The Manly side are challenging this. They may as well. From this angle, it's probably a little bit difficult to tell. It might have hit the back of the Penrith player's hand They won that one. I'm not sure. The referee's trying to work out where they've got a challenge <laughs> they up their sleeve. <laughs> they got a challenge. No, no, the Penrith player said, he said they haven't got any challenges left. Yes, he said they won that one. That's why it still staggers me that they challenge this go shot into hit. Well, obviously, all I can think of is that when Hines and Luai went for that ball that we had a bit of a doubt about, is that Hines immediately said, yeah, no worries, I've knocked it dead, because they had the challenge up their sleeve and just didn't bother. And that was at a crucial stage of the game. If they'd scored then, they were well and truly back in business. This one is just basically, divine, is, uh, basically delaying the trophy presentation. Yeah, I'm having trouble working out whether it did touch a Penrith player or not here because it's, it's right on the edge of the screen. You don't really get a good view of it here. They're only showing... Well, they showed an angle from yeah. the back of the, the dead ball line and one from the side. It'd be interesting yeah, to see no what they come up okay. with here. Overturn, guys. Manly scrum feet. Overturn. Manly scrum feet. No more challenges now because you've been to... Overturn. Why is it a Manly scrum feed? It should be a Penrith scrum feed. So the play's dead at that decision. So, Manly feet. Oh. When he makes a decision, that means the play's dead. So you can't go onto the try. Let's get him in. Oh. So when he makes a decision, you can't go onto the try. And so that didn't make any difference. So I don't think Penrith wanted to pack the scrum and have a look at that. Yeah, but the bottom line is that it, it denied Penrith the, the Manly the try. But he didn't ever he didn't blow the whistle till after he put the ball down. Anyway, not gonna not gonna not gonna Full make time, any difference. David, Full congratulations time. to the Penrith. Penrith, 34 points to 18.
And for the Panthers, Panthers this afternoon, Anisi, Jennings, Bellino, May, Luai and Luke scored the tries. And Edwards, uh, in the end, kicked five goals from six attempts. While for the Manly Sea Eagles, Trebojevic, Knight and Garner scored the tries. And Pratt kicked three goals from three attempts. So congratulations to the Penrith Panthers. And Cameron Serraldo, who coached the Penrith Panthers. And I still remember that horrible night at Cronulla when he suffered that horrific uh, break. And uh, he did all his ligaments and compound fracture yeah, of his a lovely, ankle. Lovely bloke too, Cameron oh, Sorrell. Super, super young fella. As you said, his first uh, season of coaching and he's had success with an under-20s Penrith outfit. So congratulations to them as... You know, we, Chris said before that they just keep churning out player after player after player. They've got a wonderful nursery out there. As Phil Gould, I can see walking out there, and obviously he'd be pretty proud of that performance. They no doubt have some future first graders in that squad. And let's not forget Ivan Cleary's young bloke couldn't play because he was playing Australian schoolboys. The the halfback, and I think he's captain of the side. So they've yeah. done it, you know, without a couple of decent players. He's and the also, captain, a normal goal kicker, isn't he? Yeah, Robert Jennings also injured himself in that game too. So good performance from him. But congratulations to Manly as well. They were they were in that game basically the whole time, but just mistakes in the last ten minutes cruelled them. Now, can I see Chris Warren down there anyway? Oh, be well, there. you've got his microphone. He's good. It's very good. <laughs> He's got Gus Gould with him right now. Chris, it's all yours. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Phil, um, some rising talent there and uh, a big effort in the end by your boys. Yeah, it was. Very warm day out here today. Um, you know, we've been in the top three, two or three all season. Um, so it was just as us today. I think they won this game. They had to battle very hard. Manly were very courageous. They've had a great final series. Uh, but the quality of 20s football at the back end of the year, I thought was terrific. Cameron Sowaldo, a, a good coach in the making as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cameron was the assistant coach last year. We elevated him this year. Meticulous. Uh, gets his work done with a matter of fact. He really gets on with all the young fellas, which I find really good. Great development coach and uh, hopefully a good future in front of him. So that's the second under-20s premiership in, in three years for Penrith. And I guess it was always going to be difficult given that they'd beaten Manly pretty easily in the three previous occasions this year. Yeah, Manly came on late in the year. They're a good side, you know, and uh, uh, they battled all the way. They made our blacks work for it, and, and that's what you'd expect in a grand final. We anticipated that, so uh, very good from our blacks to, to finally get through and win it. Uh, two premierships in three years, which is great for the club, great for the district, and uh, great for our staff. Our staff work very, very hard, development, education and welfare, and, and do a really good job with these kids, and hopefully we're reducing NRL players of the future. Thanks, Phil. Hopefully we'll see a few of these boys in first grade next year. I hope so, too. Good on Enjoy you. your day. Right. The head of football having a chat to Chris Warren, Kurt courtesy of the Star Sydney, the ultimate sports viewing destination. No doubt plenty of people down there this afternoon uh, tuning in to the Nines coverage. They might even have the 2GB app going in the area, listening to the continuous call team. 34-18 Penrith over the Manly Sea Eagles in the Holden Cup Grand Final for 2015. So Penrith win their second Holden Cup title in three years. They also lifted the trophy in 2013 with a 42-30 win over the Warriors. The minor premiers coached by former Panther Cameron Serrato complete a stellar year, losing just four games all season. They played Man four times this year and won on every occasions and congratulations to them uh, they were too good in the end in the Holden Cup Grand Final a fantastic performance and they've won uh, one and, and won well uh, just having a look downstairs for Chris Warren uh, I've lost him downstairs where am I uh, having a look downstairs let's see if he's got someone with him right now uh, Christopher it's all yours thanks Marco Tommy Trebojevic with me mate uh, I guess a dif disappointing way to end the season for you guys but you can hold your head high yeah, it was. Obviously, we came into the match um, looking for the win and it's just disappointing the way it ended up. But uh, Penrith are a great side. They played the best all year and don't deserve the win. I imagine you'd hope some of these other youngsters will join you in first grade in the years to come. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, they will. Obviously, uh, a great bunch of guys here and uh, they'll, they'll move up to first grade next year and you'll see a lot of them get, get their opportunity. Good luck, mate. They're starting to call you up to the dais for uh, for the Runners Up Award. So thanks for joining us on the continuous call. Thank you. No yeah, worries. we appreciate uh, his time. Tom Trebojevic, an outstanding talent. We saw plenty of him in first grade this year, and uh, he scored the the 21 tries in in the Holden Cup in 14 games this year as well. A, a mighty player and a future superstar of the game. Daryl's got big raps on him, and uh, Daryl, they were just too good in the end. The Penrith Panthers, 34 18. They're beating the Manly Sea Eagles. Yeah, they were, and I, you know they always looked like they were going to win the games. But they merely had their chances in that last 10 minutes. They just kept dropping the ball. You know, first and second tackle when they were trying to chase points when Penrith did look a bit vulnerable. They just couldn't control it. Penrith ended up taking advantage of it, scoring that late, late try to really, um, you know, cr crown what has been a great season for them. I think they came second in the season proper. 
Uh, didn't lose a game during the semi-final period. Beat everyone quite easily. I think man, the match might well be the hook here for the Panthers. Yep, so we might be able to listen to what he's got to say here. Sony, Sony Luke has been given the man of the match competition. We'll, uh, we'll pick up that a little bit later on. We're just okay. uh, checking out our microphones and the PA feed as well downstairs. But I notice Joanne Gibson's downstairs, the daughter of Jack Gibson. And uh, the man of the match in the under-20s gets the Jack Gibson medal. So well done to young Sony Luke, who is the man of the match in the under-20s uh, grand final victory. 34 points to 18. The Panthers over the Manly Seagulls, as I've mentioned. They also lifted the trophy 2013 with that 42-30 win over the Warriors. The minor premiers, and they're coached by Cameron Serraldo and uh, Gus Gould. Well, they talk about his uh, five-year plan. Some are saying it might end up being a ten-year plan. Well, it seems to be going great guns at the moment. The referees making their way up to uh, be presented with some medallions and uh, a wonderful performance from the Penrith Panthers in the end in the under-20s grand final. Just looking around the stadium, boys, uh, really crowd starting to roll in now and just talking to a few people outside the venue. There's uh, plenty of uh, different food stalls out there and uh, the, the precinct, the City Olympic Park precinct, a hive of activity at the moment, which is fantastic uh, to hear and to see. And uh, just like during the Origin series, when uh, when Ray told us about all the different food stalls who uh, were over near the train station, it's pretty much the same today. So they do a fantastic job out here at Sydney Olympic Park, and ANZ Stadium is certainly awash with colour. The Brisbane Broncos jumpers and the North Queensland jumpers as well. So Penrith 34 points to 18 over the Manly Seagulls in the under 20s grand final. Uh, there's emails coming through at 2gb.com following uh, the presentations. We'll get into the Interstate Challenge grand final. Ipswich taking on the Newcastle Knights. So the winner of the New South Wales. Cup and Queensland Cup grand finalists and it's funny Daryl, Potsy, he's now tipping Ipswich, he's convinced there's going to be changes but the team are telling Haven't us there are no changes Correct. that there'll be Correct. no changes Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, he had idea. MDF 3 out didn't he Yes, he did. That's what he was telling us well, we'll anyway. Well, see, you know what? The bloke might be a genius and let me tell you, he's got a lot of connections in Ipswich. They got what? Connections. Connections. Thank you very much. Uh, Adam's listening to us. He's e emailed us from Toon Gabby. Great call, guys, sitting by the pool in Bali. Loving it. Let us, let's go, Cowboys. Let's hope JT brings it home. No one deserves it more than him. Uh, no, I'm a Parramatta supporter. Uh, they're, they're coming through thick and fast. There's Dwight's no way that Kurt Capewell will play. I think that may be the well, words he said. Kurt Capewell will not be playing. That's exactly what Number he said. Number 12. So let's see if he runs out. Uh, hi, boys. Thanks for a great year of fun and stupidity. Also a great move getting thirsty on board. We've been fans of his for years. Cheers and regards. Dwight and Judy uh, listening to us from Kingscliff as well. Thirsty. Uh, why are you two holding hands? No, I'm missing him. I know you two have got very close and we're working together in <laughs> summer, but you've got me worried, you two. I'm going to miss him for five months. I won't have him a fix of weirdoness. What do you mean? <laughs> we're doing the summer show together. Oh, yeah, that's right. Look <laughs> 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 you know, Sundays, 12 to 4. Oh, yeah, Hello. Sorry, well, you haven't got me the next two Sundays. I'm away. Where oh, hang on a second. Be, you, know you can't that. have holidays already. We've just started. But well, you know I haven't got the next two Sunday. Where are you going? Well, you don't, you've only got three hours the next two Sundays, so you, you can easily fill in. I'm going to Fiji. Well, let me just bring in Piggy Riddell for a moment. Fiji? Don't what tell me you sunbake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell me you wear the budgies. <laughs> Ray you interviewed budgies? Tony Abbott during the week, and he <laughs> pleaded for him to put the boardies on. <laughs> Why do you thirsty? walk around with a Mai Tai with your budgies on and thongs? I wear it. Some, yeah, I wear shoes, sandals, and, uh, and scuffs. He's a nudist. <laughs> <laughs> I wear the T-shirt. I knock the it. top off a of Fiji and bitter. And I do knock the top off a of Fiji and bitter if I get the chance. Of course I do. Piggy, uh, I'll bring you in. You've watched plenty of the under-20s this year. The Penrith Panthers, 34-18 over Manly. What do you think? Yeah, I thought they did really well. Obviously, uh, uh, Manly fought really hard, but uh, too much class in the end. I thought... Uh, no, they did really well. They're a good, really good football side. They get, a lot of those players are all local juniors as well. I know Daryl has got a big rap on Leota. Like Moses, Moses Leota. He's a local St Mary's boy. He's out of, out of their, their juniors, as are a, a number of those players playing. So uh, well done to the Panthers side. Uh, as you said, two premierships in the last three years. Yeah, exactly right. So the Penrith Panthers are about to be called up one by one to collect uh, their medallion after winning the Holden Cup Grand Final 34-18. Following this uh, presentation, as I've mentioned, the Interstate Championship Grand Final with Ipswich taking on Newcastle. And then we lead into the big one tonight, Brisbane and North Queensland here at ANZ Stadium. Ray will be along to call that one from about 7.25 tonight. So a big win to Penrith in the end, 34-18 over the Manly Seagulls. David, we'll hear you after 6 o'clock. We'll have a chat to Warren Ryan, a former colleague of yours, and get his thoughts on the Grand Final. And we'll cover all the, the build-up, all the cutter and excitement, including a performance from Cole Chisel as well. So we'll talk to you a little bit later on. Uh, I can't wait to hear what I've got to say, but uh, good luck to Mark and uh, the boys. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't wait to hear what you've got to say. Well, you, know, you want me to talk to Warren. Um, no, anyway, I I hope this, that's going to be the highlight of the year. <laughs> I hope this is a cracking game. Uh, I mean, we didn't. I, I've spoken to a few people who were at the Jets game last week, and they said it was a bit disappointing for the drop ball. I said, well, we were at Wyong and Newcastle last week, and mm. we thought it was disappointing for all the drop balls. So I uh, hopefully uh, the dry weather uh, can produce some sparkling footy, and uh, that Mark and uh, Pig and Chris uh, can bring you all of the exciting action and uh, and have an enjoyable afternoon. Thank you, David. We'll talk to you a little bit later on. Now, Chris was going to have a chat to uh, the winning coach. I think we might try and get him if we can, Chris. I know you're on that wireless mic, so you might have a bit of freedom to grab him. Let's go downstairs. Chris, it's all yours. Thanks, Marco. Hopefully this wireless mic is working. Cameron Soraldo, mate, congratulations. Whether it's first grade, under-20s, reserve grade, a premiership's a premiership. You must feel chuffed. It is, mate. Unreal. They've been so good, so yeah, it's been really good, mate. They deserved it today, so... I think I've got to get in a photo. Get up there. Get up there, Cam. <laughs> Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your photo, Cameron. Well done to the Penrith Panthers there. They are down on the 40-metre line having a chat uh, to each other. They're arm in arm. Cameron Serrato gets in for his photo. The photographers are there. And well done to the Penrith Panthers. 34-18. They have taken out the Holden Cup for 2015. A wonderful performance played in front of a decent crowd. And well done to all those people that have turned out to watch the lower grades. So 34-18. Penrith over Manly. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll start previewing the second of our grand finals, the Interstate Championship. It is Ipswich taking on Newcastle, but the first grand final here at ANZ Stadium for 2015. It goes the way of Penrith over Manly in the Holden Cup.